and welcome back to MD Global Muscle here at the On The Rise Media Studio with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And we are joined, finally, by Jason Lowe. Yay! Finally. <laughs> finally. So, mate, sorry, I'm sorry it took so long. Oh, uh, it's all good. I'm happy to be here. Finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we take a we take a while. So we always get around to everyone eventually. We we do our best to you know to because you've um you were saying before you film you've you've um you've been a what because I know you've been tagging us into stuff for like you know for at least a year or so. So you're someone that does actually watch Global Muscle. Oh yeah, I watch it. It gets me through my cardio sessions, and you know I I'm a fan of bodybuilding. You know I don't just compete just to compete. I love watching the guys. I love hearing other people's stories and stuff. So getting to watch you guys interview people and just learn more about everybody and what all they go through, what they've been through. I love it. So uh, I'm going to test you now. Who's your favorite one that we've done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, put me on the spot like that. Um, I Man, I don't know. There's been a lot of good ones, to be honest with you. Uh, man, well, I, I mean, I just watched, honestly, last night, I just watched the one with... Uh, Ian and everything and I love Ian. Ian's such an an upfront, just abrupt, tells it how it is guy. So, mm. you know, I love listening to him talk cuz he's always just tells tells what's on his, you know, what's on his sleeve, you know. He just tells yeah. it how it is. He gets a lot of uh, he gets a lot of shit online, I think, because he's he he, he, re, he, re, he responds to everyone. So I think that's what makes him a little bit of a target online, I think. I, I, that's that's kind of what I'm that's kind of what I'm picking up on anyway. Yeah, I think so. I think he he lets things get to him, but at the same time, it is who it is, it is who he is, and he doesn't try to hide it, you know. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's people who care about what they do and you know what they put out there. I suppose sometimes some people are it washes over some people, and other people they like to kind of you know uh, defend or retaliate or you know respond. I suppose. But anyway, we're not uh, here to talk about <laughs> other other bodybuilders. My, here. my wife holds me back sometimes from responding. Sometimes I want to respond, yeah. and she's like, "Let it go." <laughs> right okay well this year's been a um a, a hell of a breakout year for you because um you switched from classic to 212 um mm -hmm. t t but th before we cut let's come back to that we'll circle around to that tell us a bit about your contest history up to now so uh i started my first npc show was uh 2015 wow i did the uh the diamond classic in boca raton florida Yep. And uh, I won the light heavyweight and overall and went straight to I, was, I had before MPC, I did some like drug tested, all natural shows. I was uh, I was actually a pro in the NGA, which is a drug tested organization over here. And um, I never had a coach, just kind of taught myself, was kind of figuring out my body hmm. and everything like that. And then. After doing a couple of pro shows in the NGA, I was like, okay, there's nowhere to go in this yeah. organization. Yeah, it's, it's quite you limited, know, it's, really, isn't it? It's quite limited. It's like, with... let's, let's test test the waters in the NPC. So I did my first NPC show. I won the whole show. Wow. And I was like, oh, I got this too. You know, I'm going straight <laughs> to the universe. Yeah. You know, so I went straight to the NPC universe and uh, I learned my lesson pretty quick. So uh, I ended up in ninth place there. And uh, 2015, the universe. I look back at those pictures, and I'm just like, "Wow, that was terrible." Well, in ter was sorry, what would we say terrible in terms of your placing or how you looked, or because because up to, up to that up to that point, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you hadn't lost a show. Right, correct, and uh, right, okay. like I, uh, my, my look was looking at back at it. I was like, "Why did I think I need I deserve to be on that stage?" Even you know. Uh, it was ridiculous. I, and like I said, I'd never had a coach. I was just kind of doing my thing mm. and learning as I go. So uh, after that, I was like, I need to put on some serious size because I, I, I think I was a light heavyweight. I was weighing like 184, though. Yeah. So and not like peeled yeah. to the bone. That's, like, that's closer to mid. That's almost closer to middleweight, isn't it? I, I should have probably cut down to middleweight. I would have looked much better. Yeah. So I... Uh, I started bulking hard right after the universe and then they announced the classic physique for the next year mm -hmm. to start. So I was like, Oh, well that's better. I could, I think I've already got the size for that. I can just, you know, come in, start pulling down. I don't have to bulk up. So that was the game plan. 2016. I went straight. I did the first classic physique show they held in Florida. I won the overall. Oh, wow. The first. 
the yeah, it was the um the southern USA's in mm-hmm. in Florida. Um and then I did one more qualifier just because my wife was doing it and uh, as in bikini. And so I was like, I'll jump in the show with you as I'm getting ready for Junior USA's. And when I got to Junior USA's, they measured me shorter than oh, I had no. been. Oh, <laughs> no. So I was 5'8 and a half you lost at 10 the first pounds. couple of shows I did. I get there, they measured me 5'8 on the dot and said, go lose seven pounds. <gasps> No, that's a nightmare. Because I I did classic and I was measured at 183 centimeters and 185, and I was panicking because I think my <laughs> maximum was 91 kilo, and I was thinking, oh no, if I don't make, if I measure differently, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm, I'm out of the show, you know? Yeah, that's exactly how I felt, Shit. and I was. So I went and sat in the sauna for like a few hours, <laughs> just moving around, doing everything I could in the sauna. I got back. And I barely made weight. I was, I made it, but I looked terrible. I, I just, you know, the next day on stage, I, I didn't fill out. I didn't, nothing was popping. And yeah. I ended up in 13th place. Oh, God, but you must look dry, though. I mean, sometimes, like, I've it, seen guys come out of the sauna when I've literally seen where people like to make, like, heavy weight. Or, and they've, they've worn, like, uh, you know, garbage bags, you know, to sort of keep generate, yeah. you know, try and just generate as much heat to get out as much water. And I sometimes they look a lot better. They look tighter, you know? You're right, but I think you didn't. Once again, I'm still my own coach. I was still learning things, and yeah. I think I tried to compensate by trying to fill out too much after depleting like that. Okay. And I think I overdid it. So, um, after that, they told me come in leaner, harder, and uh, they. It was weird because I was the first ever pro qualifier for Classic Physique. I don't think they quite knew what they were looking for yet. Yeah. And they, a lot of the guys that won that first year. And that junior essays were smaller, okay. um, a lot. So um, I went straight to junior nationals after that, which was a month later, and I just peeled down. I knew they were going to weigh measure me shorter, so I came in. Uh, this was before they increased the weight limits too. I had to be 177 pounds at five eight. Okay, 170. Which was horrible. Right. Okay. Um, so I did that, and I came in. I ended up in sixth place. That's better. From 13th a month earlier. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I was like, that could have gone anyway. You know, all top six looked great. Mm. So first call outs after getting 13th a month earlier, I kept pushing, went straight to North Americans and got third place. Great. And honestly, I should have turned pro there because the top two already earned their pro card as masters. Oh, okay. Okay. And so the pro card should have gone down to me, but they didn't. So I was, you know, what are you going to do? I'm not going to argue with them. So I went straight to nationals after that. It was a very long year. (laughs) Yeah. Long (laughs) prep. Yes. I went to nationals after that. And, uh, of course, George Peterson shows up. Oh shit. So, uh, didn't win that one. Um, I ended up in fourth, actually, which a lot of people said I should have been, you know, top two with George. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I look back at it now. And if I had turned pro earlier, I don't think I would have been ready as a pro. Mm-hmm. So it, I needed all this learning experience, I think. And after that, I went straight into Junior USA's again the next year. Mm-hmm. And that's where I earned my pro card because, and I told myself, if I don't get it here, mm. I can't make this weight anymore. I'm going to have to switch back up to bodybuilding because so, there's no way I can keep cutting down. So, you, I mean, you're cutting down to 177 pounds. What was your, was your conditioning as good as it could have been? Was it really good? 2017 junior USA's, yes. So where, you, I, where I finally turned pro. Yeah. That was some of the best conditioning I think I've ever had. Oh, wow. But I was emaciated starved to get down to that it was yeah i was like eating like 900 calories a day doing two hours of cardio two training sessions so basically you're on the same prep as your is your bikini lady 900 calories and two hours of cardio more than me (laughs) and doing less cardio she's eating more food than you and she's bikini (laughs) oh my god that was terrible that puts into perspective doesn't it really when you've gone you you're realizing, okay, my my, my, my wife uh, is, is eating more than me. She's a bikini competitor with, you know, like a tenth of muscle, amount of muscle. And here's me doing this to make weight. I re- do, you, do I really see a future in this category? Exactly. And that's, well, and the only thing I said is 
if I don't turn pro here, because pros were allowed to be 10 pounds heavier. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I was like, if I turn pro here, I can stick with this. Yeah. If I don't turn pro here, I'm going to switch back to bodybuilding and put on some muscle and not kill myself to make this weight. Mm. I got the pro card, and I was like, okay, I can be 10 pounds heavier. A month after Junior USA, it was Chicago Pro. I was like, let's just see what happens if I fill out and come into Chicago. So I did that, and... <laughs> I actually don't think it was a bad look I brought, but I did end up placing like last. I like tied for 16th with, but I think at that show, even like Santi Aragon tied with for 16th. Wow. Like that, okay. That okay. was a, it was a stacked show. I think there was 40 something pros. Chicago is like, there's no shame in kind of getting, you know, sort of lost in the mix in a big show like that with so many competitors. It was like the New York pro, the New York champions back in the day, you know, three, four deep on stage. If you're a newcomer and you're just trying to kind of get your stride, you know, to, to not get placed, um, you know, but you're saying you still brought a good package. There's no shame in that, mate. Yeah. I, I still like, I think it was a decent package I brought. It could have been probably a little better, but I also had just turned pro. I probably could have added some more muscle in to fit in. I think George Peterson got second at that show. Mm. And then a month after Chicago pro was the Tampa pro. Okay. And I'm, I live in Florida. So I was like, all right, let's push one more show. And then I take a good you know, year off or something like that. Was the plan at least. It didn't yeah. happen. But I did that <laughs> one show. I, I like to compete. I, I can't stop. My good. wife gets on. Good. Yeah, you like, got it. It's good. It's good to get that. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt. At a, so, no, at 108, um, uh, with the in the pros, you were now able to compete 187 pounds. Were you were you struggling to make that, or were you making it quite easily? I think I came in around 185, 186. Okay, uh, just, yeah. At Chicago, and then same thing when I came, went to Tampa a month later, uh, around 185. And I ended up seventh in Tampa, actually, my first first year as a pro there. That's good. And I actually liked my look in Chicago better than Tampa. I was flat as can be in Tampa. I didn't like my look at all. My parents know nothing about bodybuilding, but they came to watch that one because we live in Florida. Yeah. And I went up to their room the night before the show, posed for them, and my mom was blown away. Hmm. Your abs are so shredded. They're deep cut. They're ab- the next morning, I come off stage, and she's like, what happened? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you had no abs. You were just washed out, flat, like nothing was popping. And I just, I messed up the whole carb up peaking process. I tried to play it safe eating. I didn't have any fats. I was just cream of rice and like fish and egg white. Like it didn't work, whatever yeah. I did. So you, so you um, learned from that one, but it, I mean, it really, that, so that whatever you did there really didn't work from how you looked the night before to change that much, you know? Yeah, it, it was... I flattened out. I think I pulled water too hard, everything. So yeah. the once again, I was still coaching myself at this point. Wow. So I still hadn't ever had a coach. Yeah, I, you what, know, I turned pro, did my first two pro shows on my own. But why? I, I, I told myself, honestly, I told myself there was a lot of things I would not do until I thought I could make a career out of this. Okay. And turn pro and like... You know, as also as far as, you know, pro- performing enhancing drugs and stuff like that. I didn't touch any of that until after turning pro. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I came off stage from prejudging in uh, Tampa, Chris Aceto was sitting on the steps in the lobby. Okay. And I walked over. I was like, I got, I was like, I told my wife, I was like, babe, hold on. I got to go meet Chris Aceto. I was like, I need to learn things. Yeah. So I walked over and I just introduced myself. We talked for a minute. He was busy. He had multiple clients in the show. Mm. So he, he flat out said to me, he's just like, take a picture real quick. When you email me, send me this picture so that I know that we met and we talked. <laughs> otherwise, I, otherwise, I'm not going to respond to you. Yeah. <laughs> he like, flat out told me. So it was very lucky that I met him there and that uh we started talking he said look i've got guys i'm prepping for the olympia after that let's start working Hmm. and so after the olympia i actually got married there was my girlfriend at the time but we got married that november Mm -hmm. um we got married november 3rd and they right a week before that they announced they were adding classic physique to the Arnold Classic, and if you had placed top ten in a pro show, you could do it. Oh, 
So the day after my wedding, <laughs> I messaged Aceto. <laughs> no way. Okay. And, and uh, I said, look, they added the classic to the, uh, to the Arnold Classic. I placed seventh in Tampa. Mm -hmm. I'm qualified to enter. When can we start prep? And he's like, let's start now. I was like, can I finish my cake? I just got married yesterday. <laughs> what was so, what, what did your new wife think of this? Was she happy with this decision? She probably would have liked me to wait a week. Yeah, a week, but, a week at least. But, I mean, uh, no honeymoon then. Well, our wedding had already gotten messed up. We were supposed to get married in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And that's when the huge hurricanes came through and wiped everything out. Right, okay. A week before our wedding. Yeah. It was originally supposed to be in October. So we planned that for a year. We had to replan our wedding in a month to get married in St. Augustine instead of the Bahamas. Okay. So kind of already gotten messed up. <laughs> but uh, she was okay with it. She understood. I mean, it was the Arnold Classic. Mm -hmm. She was excited. You know, I had just turned pro that year. So she was kind of excited for me. And we had never been to the Arnold Classic, even to watch. So she wanted to go anyways. Mm -hmm. So she's very supportive. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Whenever we, we finished our wedding weekend, we had rented a or a, yeah rented a house on the beach in St. Augustine for the weekend. So we finished our weekend, got home, sent Coach pictures, and he was probably like, "Oh man, what did I agree to?" Because I I I enjoyed myself that weekend. I well, was, I think you're allowed a couple of days, mate, on your wedding. I think <laughs> I think no one's gonna begrudge you that, even a coach. Yeah. So, hmm. but we had plenty of time. I think we had like 20 weeks at that time. Yeah. So, uh, I, I was excited. I mean, we prepped and I, he pushed me hard, hmm. really hard. Cause, and we did struggle really hard to make weight, even as a pro, they actually increased the weight again. Oh, really? Up to, uh, they gave us another five pounds. That so, 192, year. so 192, 192, 192 was my weight. And you, um, and you struggled to make that under Chris Cito. Struggled. I mean, we were, we had to fast for 24 hours, wow. uh, pull water hard, sit in Epsom salt baths. And, <laughs> I've never heard of uh, Epsom salt baths before to cut weight. Why, why, why? Oh yeah. Oh, it, it pulls everything. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. It, it pulls hard. So uh, we did that. I mean, if you're not careful, you'll cramp up really hard too, though, because it does pull, you know, I think, I think I think it pulls like your, your electrolytes, your sodium and stuff too. Yeah, so you gotta yeah. be, I like a 20 minute Epsom salt bath, you know, per, at time, at time. But um, it's a new thing to me. Yeah, we, we pulled hard and I made weight at that first Arnold Classic. They, I think we weighed in at like 8 p.m. and had to be on stage the next morning. So we did not, I was up every two hours trying to eat something to fill out and we didn't fill it. We were still pretty flat on stage. I ended up 11th though, hmm. you know, my first, first Arnold classic. So what was the, really um, wanted... so what was the condition like? Because I know you, you, you've got about fullness because things you've got a very, your muscularity is very, like how you looked at the New York. It's very, you're very round and full. So I imagine you're one of those guys that probably doesn't look great when they're fat. Like some physiques can if they're just long as they're, they're lean and dry it doesn't matter if they fill out because they've got that kind of they maybe they've got more detailed kind of you know sinewy muscle so you're someone that needs to be full to look good on stage believe it or not no oh, i okay <laughs> i was i was flat as can be at new york pro i really like, we didn't carve up barely at all i uh i send pictures to aceto and yeah. i feel like trash like flat we've been on 20 grams of carbs a day and he was like, "You look so full every time." You seriously? If you, I can't. Yeah. If you like, if you don't, I mean, I've seen the pictures. I've not seen all the footage from the from the New York Pro, and especially when you did that most muscular. I posted it on the MD Instagram, and when you did your sort of uh, your fist together mo most muscular, I mean, you look so f you're like the crazy round falls, and you're saying you felt flat. Oh yeah. I wow. Was, I what was... do you look like when you're full then? <laughs> He's never completely filled me out for a show we always play it safe because he yeah. knows i i look fuller than i am but but what about so a few days after what about a few days safe. after a show then when you kind of when you maybe when you've done your last show what do you do you look really like insane after a few days when you had some like normally yeah I, i've done some photo shoots and some video yeah. shoots and stuff a couple days after the show uh, yeah at least the day after or the or two days after i'm just I'll usually be up 15 to 20 pounds and just wow. like still, still 
have the abs, striated glutes, everything. Mm -hmm. But we always play it a little safe on stage. So you, I mean, you've, we know you've switched now to two twelve, and you did that at the New York Pro. What did you, what did you weigh at the New York Pro then? <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. Um, so the Monday before the New York Pro, I was about two eleven. Oh God! Okay. And the Wednesday, I think Wednesday or Thursday, we started carving up, mm -hmm. and but reducing water. So I think like we started doing carbs every meal, but only 10 ounces of water per meal. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, the day before the show, it was carbs every meal, but, and nothing huge, like a cup of rice or, you know, a few ounces of potatoes, something it wasn't huge meals. Yeah. And, um, even less water, like six ounces of water per meal on Friday. But I kept just losing weight and losing weight and losing weight. Every time I ate, I would drop weight. I woke up the morning of the show at 200 pounds. Two, so you lost 11 pounds? Yeah. I, and the morning of the show, the only thing we ate before prejudging was two eggs and two rice cakes. <laughs> so surely, regardless of the fact you lost 11 pounds, you said you were flat, were you happy with what you brought to the New York Pro? Because for me oh. personally, I was blown away by you, how you, how you looked how you how detailed you were how round how full how close it was between you and deck trick what was your feelings i was ecstatic i my best look ever i i yeah. freaking loved it i'm glad and you said that i'm glad you said that yeah no i was so super happy and when i kept telling the cedo my weight he's like stop i don't care about your weight yeah. i care about what you look like he's like you're gonna look bigger than what you weigh yeah he says stop telling i don't care what you weigh anymore you you're gonna make weight you are, or and, and then after we made weight, he's like, "Stop telling me about your weight. I don't care." Mm. He's like, "I'm looking at you, and you're getting harder and drier every time we eat." Good. So, yeah, that, what excites me the most is that I know I can add ten pounds of solid muscle and stay in the two twelve division. Exactly. Now I'm glad you're looking at the positives here. So, I mean, I'll be honest. We had all the um, the older pictures coming through on on the on the MD the group chat, and I was seeing all the phone pictures. I saw the high res pictures. And to be honest, I was like, okay, I'll give that pose, maybe the that pose to to you, that pose to Dectric. I was literally, it was a flip of a coin. I thought, I thought Dectric had you in the, I thought the readable bicep. I thought he had you in, but like I, I, all the side pose, the front poses, you know, the most muscular. It was, it was so close. I mean, it 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 must have gone down to the wire. What was it like for you up there? Did you feel like that it was very that it was as close as I think you know a lot of us thought it was? After I saw the pictures, yeah. When I was on stage, I had no idea. Like when no idea I at was, all. I was ecstatic when they called me out for first call outs. <laughs> After getting eleventh place in Tampa, yeah, that was my goal. I was like, I want to win. I always want to win. Hmm. But my goal was like, okay, I got eleventh in Tampa. I better get first call outs here. Hmm. Nobody has me in the radar. Nobody has me in their predictions because of my tampa placing sorry what one, and... one second one jason i've completely forgot of course you got 11th at tampa a couple of weeks before didn't you yeah so you i mean i mean you messaged me about this you said i'm so glad i redeemed myself after tampa whatever it was in those words um how did you go from 11th to second i mean and, and look so drastically different what was the difference I th honestly, I, we didn't change very much. It was time. Okay. I just, I needed more time. We, we, he, I see, this was our first full prep as a 212 bodybuilder. Yeah. And he kept me very full for the first probably eight weeks of the prep. Hmm. And but I, in my head, I'm used to classic physique where I'm suffering right off the go. Yeah. And we're eight weeks into the prep. I'm like, are we going to start like working? Are we going to start pushing it and like suffering a little bit? Because I'm still feeling good and I'm not suffering. I feel like we can push it harder. Hmm. And he just, he kept putting, like keeping me full. I think he was really trying to hold on to the size. And I think we just needed more time because obviously it worked to New York, yeah. but we weren't quite there conditioning wise so, for, for Tampa. So and well, because of that, he tried to pull we tried to pull water to tighten up a little even more for Tampa when we didn't really have to do that much for uh, New York. So when people say they like they missed their peak, I suppose there is some truth that you know you just you just felt like you needed a few extra weeks to kind of bring your body together. So I know Chris likes to rotate carbs a lot. He'll change them from day to day. 
were you were you kind of cruising in on on a decent amount of carbs from Tampa to the New York? A little more than I was into Tampa for sure, because oh, wow. uh, yeah, because we I ate. I ate pretty much whatever I wanted for about four or five days after Tampa. Yeah. And when we got right back on the diet, my metabolism was just through the roof. Yeah. And so I think Tampa, the last time I got a cheat meal was 12 weeks out for Tampa. <laughs> okay. And for New York, I was getting a burger and fries like every five days. And, <laughs> okay. and right cool. now after New York, I'm, it's even crazier. Like he's, he's feeding me like crazy right now. I'm eating way more and I'm dropping weight faster. Hmm. So do you feel so. like you've really like stepped up now? You've got the second at New York and now you're bringing the kind of, like really you've established yourself now as, you know, uh, not someone who's just switching from one category to the next and is trying the, it's trying to you know, get the bottom of the ladder again. You kind of go into the second New York pro and I mean, no one, I don't think anyone would have really argued if you'd have won it. Um, do you feel like you've really, really kind of made a statement now as a 212? Definitely. I yeah. definitely feel like before, especially go after the Tampa pro, you know, they're like, Oh yeah. Okay. We got this guy. He's switching from classic of physique. It's going to take him a little time to make his way in it. And then after New York, I feel like really I've kind of proven that I'm serious in this division. I'm going to be a contender. And I still feel like, you know, especially when we get to the Olympia, it's going to be a different story. I need those extra 10 pounds to probably be with the top tier guys. Well, I mean, but, Sean Clarita. But Sean Clarita is like five feet tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But the thing is, um, he looks phenomenal. He holds his muscle amazingly, but he, you know, at his yeah. height, he can afford to be that light. He's, he's you know, three and, foot and six. still have that so. fullness and that muscularity. Yeah. Plus, I mean, five, eight is actually quite tall for a two twelve, isn't it? It is. It is. And honestly, so... my goal yeah was to move up to the open oh wow uh, but after coming in at 200 pounds yeah. i know i have at least another year or possibly two years in the 212 totally agree and i'm very aceto and me are both very moderate with what we do yeah where i'm not going to push things to the extreme to just to get up to 230 235 on stage i'm gonna i'm gonna do things healthier and like yeah slow go you know I'm not going to try and push things very quickly because also i feel like you're going to lose a lot of lines and shape if you try and push it too fast i i think jason i think if you're 200 pounds on stage as, as you were at the new york pro you're five foot eight and you kind of that's in my head that kind of registers as, as like a, a slightly smaller 212 but you don't look small you've got maybe it's because of the, the roundness and the thickness of your muscle bellies if you can look as big as you do at five foot eight in a class that is really for guys five foot six maximum, really. I mean, I know George Peterson was a bit of an anomaly as well because he's, you know, he was he's a tall. The same height. Yeah, he's the same height. He's five foot eight. Yeah. So I think if you've if you've got ten to twelve pounds to still put on as a two twelve, I think you'd be crazy to even think of switching for another year, maybe even two years. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely. And yeah. After seeing the New York Pro, I that's what made that decision for me because before that. You know, in my head, I was like, okay, I will bring my best ever physique if I can be around 230 on stage. But after seeing New York yeah. at 200 pounds, mm -hmm. you know, it, 10 more pounds of muscle on a 5'8 frame yeah. is going to look, you know, drastically different. So please tell me you're doing Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> you are. So you'll be the first. You'll be the first to hear it. I won't tell a soul. I promise. You'll I won't be tell the first anyone. To hear Colleen, so sw can... sworn to secrecy. Okay, he promises not to say. <laughs> I guess the world will hear it on Wednesday. Yeah, they will. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, we're going for Chicago. Probably. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Kermit arms so, for that one. So uh... let's, uh, let's, let's put me and Keon next to each other and see what oh, happens. Oh, wow, you next to Keon. My God, that's going to be exciting. <laughs> wow. Be so, yeah, Keon Pierce. Oh, my we, God. We turned pro at the same show, too. That's interesting, yeah. So he, and he was and he was a natural as well, wasn't he? Up to a certain yeah, point, he yeah. He was. I mean, he yeah. Was... We talked, actually. That's how we met. We talked uh, leading into turning pro. We were messaging each other on Instagram and stuff, being like, "Hey, man, you look amazing." Because you, you, we were different height class, we weren't going to go against each other. Yeah. And uh, we both turned pro there, and we've done a lot of the same shows since. But mm -hmm. um, Keon versus I mean, Jason. 
Tampa Pro uh, 2018. He got second, I got third. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So, so who else is doing Chicago then in the 212 that you know of? The only ones I know of for sure is uh, Adam Young. Yeah, he's good. And who got fourth place in New York. Mm hmm. And Kevin Johnson, who got fifth place in Tampa. Okay, yeah, yeah, I saw him. Yeah. What about uh, um, what about uh, Derek Oslin? Is he doing it, or is he shutting it down? I don't believe so, because he's first in points, and I think he's just shooting for the Olympia. Okay, okay. I think he's safe on points because Chicago's a tier three show instead of mm -hmm. a tier two, mm -hmm. and so that you don't get as many points. I don't think anyone could pass him up. Yeah. So how are you doing on points, points even without Chicago? I'm second in points right now. Okay, so so, I, but there if Adam and Kevin and Errol Moore, I don't know if Errol Moore plans on doing it or not, since he just did the Open Division in, in California. Yeah, but if he does it, or if any three of them place in the top five, they can pass me in points if I don't do it. Right. So you really need to Chicago to really secure your place at the Olympia this year. Exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, obviously, I'm going to win. <laughs> yeah, of course. Wow, you versus uh, Keon, man. That's going to be think exciting. It, I think it'd be a, yeah. And, you know, Keon is kind of the unknown because we haven't seen him on a 212 stage yet, but he looks insane in his pictures. I, I'll be honest. I seen so, that front double bicep, mate, and uh, I was my, I, shot, my eyes popped out on stalks. And someone said yeah. he looked like a cross between Brian Buchanan and Thierry Pastel, if you remember those names. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Brian Buchanan was insane. Yeah, um, he, amazing. It, it'll be interesting to see when he really peels down. You know, he's, we only have you know four and a half or three and a half to four weeks now. So mm. um, I haven't seen him hit any like back shots from, you know, with the legs showing or anything. So, yeah. you know, if he comes in with insane conditioning that, you know, his his shape is insane. Yeah. Did you see? Did you so, see it, the, when he did the Arnold Classic and then he did the New York Pro? It was like two or three months difference last oh, yeah. year. I've never seen anyone change so much <laughs> in two. months. I was like, it. I, I was yeah. there at the Arnold Classic and Flex Wheeler was sat next to me, and then I remember I was thinking, and he just he went to the New York Pro as a obviously the classic, and I was like, how the hell did he put that much size on so quick? I mean, it was astonishing and i think he's his, his rate of improvement so i think that's gonna be a really exciting uh battle um did you did you see the footage of uh derek lunsford yesterday from the carbon yeah, culture what i did, what I did. he looks so freaky man I, like that's where in my head <laughs> i'm looking at him and i'm saying i need that extra 10 pounds yeah yeah because <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I mean, 13 weeks out and his legs are conditioned and separate. I know there's a bit of fluff yeah. on the upper body, but I mean, he, he looks to huge. I mean, he's absolutely colossal. He's so wide. It looks like he looks like a mini Jay Cutler. But to me, I mean, he looks I don't know what he's weighing there, but I think he must be at least 230 pounds at least. Oh, yeah, I, I would I would I would say so. He looks freaking insane right now. Mm. Uh, you like you said, separation and that much size. You know, he's gonna—he's just gonna run into the same problem Flex Lewis always did with having to make that weight. That's and, true. That's true. And then fill back out. Like, I—I I know I saw him in an interview. It might have been on uh, Jose Raymond's podcast or something, where he was saying, you know, eventually he's not saying no to moving up to the open, but he wants to win an Olympia in the 212 first. Yeah. So, I'm like, I could see it happening for sure. He looks insane, but. I, I, I have to say he's got to move up to the open eventually at that, I, I, with that much muscle. Imagine if, imagine if Hadi or William Bonnack had, or, or, or Flex Lewis had just stayed in the 212. They would have just carried on winning shows, winning shows. But at the end of the day, we all want to see, like what William Bonnack's done with his physique at the Arnold Classic, go up to about 230 and kind of just... Because he 2012, he did the 212. People forget this. And then he, yeah. he jumped up to the open and it's like Hadi. I mean, Hadi's probably only six to eight pounds when he over the uh, over the 212 limit when he's competing as an open but they look so much better these guys you know flex oh, yeah? flex what do you think flex Lewis is going to compete at this year as an open because there's a bit of there's a bit of conjecture about what he, bob chick said he'll be no heavier than 218 some people are saying he'll be 230 what do you think i could see him in the 220s <sighs> yeah me too yeah I, I don't think he's gonna try and push it up to 230 or anything like that because he's known for his conditioning he comes in granite mm. so i don't think he's gonna 
sacrifice any of that. But you see his pictures a couple weeks out from the Olympia and stuff like that, and he was always granite and full, you know, at in the 220s. Mm. And now he's just not going to have to suck down anymore. So let's, let's keep the two... Sorry, go on. I just want to say, to go along with it, you're saying about how they're only a couple pounds above. Mm. I weighed less on the New York Pro stage than I did on the Olympia stage in Class of Gazique last year. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay. I had two days, I had two days to fill out for yeah. the Class of Gazique Olympia. We weighed in two days before the show. I weighed in at 192 on the dot. Yeah. And I was 205 on stage. Even more than George Peterson then. And I, uh, and, but I looked better here at 200. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think sometimes people uh, get too hung up on things like body weight and filling out. And sometimes maybe they just need to, like you said, Chris said to you, look, don't worry about your body weight. Well, you know, I can physically see you looking better at your weights dropping. It doesn't matter. All that, all that matters is, is how you look on stage. You know, it's, uh, exactly. Yeah. They're not they're not weighing us on stage. They're not measuring our body parts yeah. on stage. Yeah. It's all about the presentation that you give. Yeah. So let's let's keep the two twelve theme running because I keep asking this question of everyone. We've got the X two twelve, you've got Hadi Chupan, William Bonnack, and Flex Lewis. Say there's a call out at the Olympia, what happens? Who beats who? Those three? Yeah. I I'm really <laughs> excited for this call out. I'm I keep going on and on about it. It I th- <laughs> no disrespect to William Bonac whatsoever. Of course. But I honestly think that's going to be between Flex Lewis and Hottie okay. just because of the conditioning. Really? Bonac has an amazing shape. He comes in lean and shredded, mm. but he doesn't have that granite look. And I think he'd be cut. He, he's, he's shredded and he's peeled, but the granite look that Flex and uh, Hottie bring that just, almost Dorian-esque granite. Oh, okay. Like, I I think William's got a fuller, rounder, like a very pretty physique, yeah. round and bubbly muscle. But uh, I think he'd almost be the oddball out when those two are granite hard. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, oh, that's interesting. I'd have to see. I mean, we haven't seen them next to each other since well, what was that show? 2017. Or? Yes. Yeah. But no. Well, but who's got the best track record in terms of the Open? It's William Bonnack. He's got two Arnold Classics, a second on, Olympia, third Olympia. I just, right, I, I'm really excited to see Flex look because I saw Flex Lewis and William Bonnack compete against each other in 2012 at the uh, the British Grand Prix and the Prague Pro. But I'm, I mean, to see them both as opens. I mean, William's a little bit further ahead in terms of how he is as an open competitor. But I'm really excited back. to see them too, and I'd love to see Hadi bring his Vancouver look, that kind of look. I could, you're right. I could be completely backwards. Maybe William's it's t- it's tough, rounder, right? fuller, you know, bubbly muscle yeah. puts him ahead, and then the other two are fighting for second and third. I, you know, I could be backwards on that. I guess it depends on what the judges prefer, as far as that goes. Mm. But. Uh, my personal preference yeah you know i love william's physique honestly i do his the round full muscle he's very uh aesthetic physique with that goes but it just the the graining like i think it's because i'm jealous (laughs) yeah you want that i don't want that that look grainy that grainy nasty look that flex and uh and hottie get and i wish i could yeah and maybe it'll come with time Um, the thing is how you how old are you jason I'm 33. Oh, 33. So you know, I was. You know, you're not like 25 then. You know, it's like you no, know, I'm not super, super young. You should. You're starting I mean, to get muscle maturity, kind of and I think I, mean, I, th- I got see- into the, I got into bodybuilding a little late. You know, I I graduated high school and kind of got into the party scene for a few years. Um, Didn't we all? My, I've told the story before, but my brother passed away, and when I was 18 and I kind of went off the deep end okay. partying and doing stupid things and just getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was two when I was 20, 24, 25, I, I was like, all right, I got to get back in the gym, get back in shape, stop doing all these stupid things that are destructive yeah. and do something, you know, positive and constructive with my life. So that's when I got into bodybuilding and 2000, you know, 11 is whenever I actually started 2011, 2012 is when I actually started training for bodybuilding. Okay. So it, you know, I, I look back at it now. I'm like, man, cause I was weightlifting team all through high school. Okay. I was like, 
Cool. If I would have just kept <laughs> on with it then yeah. and well, gotten right into the Could have, would have, could have, would have, should have, mate. You know, thing is, like, life happens. Things happen. Like, you know, so your brother died and he, that created a reaction in you that caused you to kind of uh, express yourself in a destructive way. You know, for a few years, you had to, that's how you personally had to process it. It's brought you to this point, you know. So I, I, I just think, uh, I think only look forwards now, mate, because I think, I think what you produced at the New York Pro was so impressive. Uh, and especially even look, look what you managed to achieve in just a couple of weeks, mate, from Tampa. to So it shows that imagine if you did that improvement again for the Olympia in terms of your physique of what you can bring, you know, and you've still got 13 we, weeks, mate, you know. We plan on doing that for the Chicago. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, that's, good. Uh, what's amazing is when Aceto starts getting excited. Oh, Because normally you send check-ins, he says, look good, picks tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. Look better. Picks tomorrow. Here's your plan for next two days. Picks tomorrow. Yeah. You know, now I'm sending pictures and he's like, you're going to be so much better in Chicago. We're going to win this. Good. Blah, blah, blah. You know, he's like, he's excited. So he knows, you know, we're improving. I'm 15 pounds up from, from my stage weight in New York. Yeah. And I still have the same conditioning pretty much right now. I'm fantastic. I th to be honest, mate, I mean, it's, I, I think it's going to be really exciting to see you go up against, well, Keon go up against you. I mean, he's he's a, he's a, he, he's unproven as a 212, so we don't know what it's a fresh physique we're seeing, you know, kind of like what you've brought from classic to 212, you know. So it's going to be interesting right. to see these two new guys that really, like, have got all the potential in the world to, to really, you know... Uh, do great as a 212 i mean it's there's no there's no limit to what you two personally could achieve you know i'm excited so, yeah I'm excited. I, can, I can i can feel it i it's can gonna feel be, it it's gonna be a fun battle and i'm not counting out anybody else i don't know who else is doing it i know i mean kevin johnson got fifth in, in tampa he looks phenomenal he's mm -hmm. coming in better this show i'm sure you know so i'm not counting anyone else out but i, I do definitely think it's gonna be a fun battle uh seeing what Keon brings and knowing that I'm going to come in yeah. even better than I was in New York. And the Chicago show is always a fantastic show. Another Tim Gardner show, fantastically run. Yeah. Sorry, go, go. Which is in Atlanta, but. Yeah, yeah. well, they're always cheered. Doesn't matter. All the show, <laughs> New York's in Tampa and bloody, yeah, yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, going back to, uh, we're saying about Derek Lunsford. Have you heard that um, Kamal is going to be training with Flex Lewis for the Olympia? I have, which you is have. only like two hours south of where I of live. Of course, I yeah, 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 yeah. I would on. love to go down there and get a couple of training sessions. I've I've tried to message Flex Lewis a few times and I've never gotten the invite to come down as a dragon <laughs> oh, player. Come on, Flex. Come but, on. Give the guy a chance. So, yeah. but no, that's, yeah, he's only a couple hours south of me, man. If I could get down there to get a training session or two in with them, Do that it. would be, because I mean, Kamal is with Aceto too. Maybe yes. I could tell Aceto, you know, hey, let Kamal know. I think, <laughs> I think you should um, send Chris a text and say, look, just, uh, you know, because... Because obviously there's Rafael Brendeo down there. There's John De La Rosa down there. There's, um, yeah. you know, there's Kamal training with Flex Lewis. You know, you've got the seven-time 212 Olympia champion and the current 212 oh, yeah. Olympia champion training together. They've, just, been, they've been friends just since. Just learn some things from yeah. him. Yeah. They've you been know? Friends for just years, to those soak guys. up as much as I could. Yeah. You know, that would be amazing. Plus, the, the gym just looks insane. Like, yeah. the gym looks awesome. Like, it the is. equipment they have there. And just the environment of being around champions like that. Hmm would just man that would that would push me to the next level i think well, and that's part of the problem with being in daytona there's not really anyone here to push me to that next level hmm. um my wife and i i have actually talked about moving over towards tampa because there are so many good bodybuilders over there yeah oh you, know, you have you have Derek lunsford you have yeah. uh ben pikolski you have uh cody montgomery um derek oslin yeah you know, there's there's nobody in Day Daytona. Yeah. So, so, so what what are your is your career transferable? What do you do for a living? I'm a trainer. So okay. yeah, I can. Yes, transferable. My wife is that's the more difficult. She's the supervisor of a medical office over here. Okay. So she's the she's the brains. She went and got her master's degree and all that. <laughs> You're the meathead. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't truly. So, uh, does but, your uh, sorry does your wife still compete? Yeah, we actually got her prepping right now to do the Amateur Olympia. Oh, wow. In uh, uh, the Vegas one. Yep. So that'll be uh, fun because I'll be do doing the uh, the Olympia. And the day before yeah. I go, she'll be doing the Amateur Olympia. 
and uh so it'll be that'll be fun you need to get some of this documented because i think that's interesting seeing a couple go into the Olympia and do some some filming and uh, get, get some gopro stuck in the car and <laughs> no seriously it's a nice yep. it's a nice oh, way right. to document you know a couple kind of go into the same event i think it's I, th- I like I like that's the sort of thing I would watch. I think it's interesting, you know, just to see the kind yeah. of uh, the behind the scenes stuff and it'd be good for your profile. So um, let's talk about the Mr. Olympia. Who's winning and why? I'm like I said, I watched the uh, the last episode last night. <laughs> I have to kind of agree first place with uh, with what Ian said. Okay. I can't imagine Phil coming back without him being very confident that he's going to win. Okay. If he, and besides the stomach issue, if he has that fixed, where's his weakness? Yeah, it's fixed. You know? It's fixed. It's fixed. No, it, I, to be honest, I'll, I'll, I'll interject here. You know, everyone knows I'm a good friend of Phil's. Um, for me, it, apart from the, it, the, take the stomach out of the equation, at the 2018 Olympia, his physique was not popping the same. Now, this is something a lot of people aren't saying i remember when he came out by himself and he was hitting his compulsories and the quiet the crowd was quite quiet for normal when phil comes out you know and like i said this is me being 100 percent objective but if they because he if you look at some of his poses he was hitting the front door by front last bit things weren't exploding like they normally were it's i i think right. i don't know maybe cause I, was, he, cause, I was there for that as well yeah yeah so i think and... if, if he gets that kind of fullness like because if you look at some of the pictures things weren't really pushing on each other like normal so if he gets that he, crazy 3d like fullness he almost, back he's it's game over he was almost struggling to hold the poses that year right you know like it was hard he was di- like really having to strain and struggle to to hit the poses correctly and normally he doesn't have to do that yeah so but point. if he comes in at his best or even close to his best i i can't i can't see him, see him not taking the show mm. as far as the next few places go man there's so many good guys coming into the show mm. i mean obviously brandon's the reigning champ and he's looking insanely huge in his pictures yep so if he comes in the only knock I have on Brandon's physique is separation in certain areas. Yeah. He's got all the muscle in the world. Mm. He's got amazing shape. You know, he comes in shredded to the bone. It's, there's just not a lot of deep separation. I, I think he likes sec- separation next to someone like a Hadi or a Flex Lewis or a Phil Heath when he's on. But, um, I mean, obviously it won in the Olympia title last year and he beat Bonac yeah. and he beat uh, Hadi Schuppen, who and arguably I, weren't at their best either, but they still have very, very good muscle separation. And I compl- I think he completely deserved the win too, for yeah. sure. Um, so, and then after that, like I said, man, it's so hard. I mean, like on, on paper, like you said, William Bonac was second last year. Mm-hmm. But then you got Flex Lewis coming in. You got if Hottie Chupin can make it to America. I don't know how that is this year. Um, but, man, I, there's so many even after that that are, if they come in at their best ever, mm. it's going to be an interesting show. Let's just... I, yeah, I can't interested. wait. I can't wait. I can't. And honestly, the 212 as well. Do you think uh, Kamal Ogagni can defend his title? If I think he can, yeah, yes. Why? If if Derek comes in, absolutely nutty, peel to the bone. Yeah, the... I, I think his structure is almost impossible to beat. If he were like peel to the bone, yeah. grainy, like last year, I was sitting in the a few rows back in pre-judging and he was just watery as can be yeah he wasn't the judging wasn't he he was and then yeah, at night pre-judging. he really he looked, po- looked a lot better at night he did he did but at pre-judging he was so watery on stage i like i honestly would have had a couple people even above him at pre-judging yeah even though his structure and his shape and muscularity is phenomenal just he stands out I, doesn't I, he? he stands what happened out. exactly but like yeah he was just super watery at, at pre-judging came back much better at finals yeah but uh, what if a... he puts it all together perfectly, yeah, he's hard to beat, man. I know. The thing is, he's never really brought a hundred percent dry, shredded condition to the Olympian. He's been fifth, second, second. So it's obviously if to he can come Olympia, in watery yeah. and he comes in on, it's like it's gonna be I've, it's gonna be tough, isn't it, for Kamal? And I've seen him smaller before he turned pro with the most ridiculous conditioning. There like, you go. There first you time go. I ever saw him was the year I did. Uh, junior nationals mm-hmm. he was doing junior nationals as a middleweight <laughs> it's crazy 
And I was like, I was in the stands because I didn't have to be backstage yet. Yeah. And I'm like yeah. on my phone and I look up and I'm like, I was like, babe, did we miss a weight class? <laughs> and she's like, I, I don't think so. I was like, is this heavyweight? And she's like, I, I'm not sure. It looks like it. And then he walks off stage and they're like, all right, let's get all the middleweights back out here. I'm like, wow. wow. Okay. I was like mind blown. I couldn't yeah. believe he was a middleweight out there. So what about George Peterson? Because I think that's another one like Flex Lewis going into the open. How do you, I mean, he really like dominated at Tampa and he, everyone was like, oh, it was just a clear win. He was kind of like 95% of his best because we know his, his conditioning is out of this world. When he's 100% yeah. on, like he was at the three thirds he had in the classic Olympia, he's so, he, his conditioning is like, it's perfect. It's perfect. There's no arguing with it. How do you think he could do? Do you think he could um, beat Lunsford, Clarida, uh, Kamal? Do you think he's got the chance of winning the whole thing? I could see him in the top five. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, George is George is a freak. He's awesome. He, besides being one of the nicest guys in the world, <laughs> yeah, he's too, cool dude. Uh, he's a. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming he has hollow bones. Yes. The way. I know that he holds all that muscle and just still makes, I don't know how he was making weight in classic. Ne- needs but, to, uh, uh, needs to work his back a bit as well. Maybe. It's <laughs> yeah, <yeah. laughs> like crazy. We all have weak points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but even his, his legs, everything looked, looked awesome. I remember when we turned, when he turned pro, we both did nationals. I was like, eh, his hamstrings are pretty weak, you know, and uh, he's brought everything up so yeah, much. Incredible. You know, and, you know, I can see him making some serious improvements from New York to the Olympia. Hmm. So, I mean, he, I definitely could see him making the top five. Uh, like I said, I, I don't even know who all's doing it, but I mean, you got, you know, Kamal, Derek, Sean Clarita. Yep. There, I mean, there's Short, three Sean, people in the top five right there. I mean, Sean Clarida has been 16th, 13th, 9th, 7th, 3rd. I mean, that guy, since 20, for the last five years, has moved up every single year. He's one of those guys that you know, as soon as he walks on stage, unless he's done something really stupid with his physique, uh, he's going to mm. be improved. He's going to be bigger. He's going to be oh, harder. Yeah. He's going to be he's gonna oh, be freakier. Yeah. So unless he maxes out his physique and does something, you know, where he loses his lines, which I don't think he's going to do because I think he's a smart guy. He's going to be better than he was last year. You can that's yeah. one of those guys that you can guarantee it's going to he's going to be better. He's a smart guy. Matt Jansen's a really smart guy and I don't think they're going to screw it up, you yeah. know. And I think if you look at any of Matt Jansen's clients from their last season to through their off season, yeah. I mean, the improvements that so many of them have made like just building look at Brett Wilkins. I mean, dude, he's blown my mind. Who? Brett Wilkin, no Ivana's uh, Ivana's husband. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ivana Vucic. Yeah, like he turned pro a little bit after me, and in classic. Okay. And now he's like two sixty shredded. <laughs> two sixty shredded. I'm like, oh my god, what, what happened? Well, I know he did a good job with Nick Walker. I mean, he's you know, and Nick yeah, Walker's doing it, not, Nick Walker's doing insane. Chicago as well. So is his pro debut. Yeah, I know that'll that'll be cool to see him up there. Uh, I met him at the grand opening of the Revive Gym down in uh, South Florida one uh, last year, I think, mm-hmm. after the Olympia. And I swear, he was still amateur. That is one of the thickest people I have ever stood next to. Just the <laughs> mo- a- amount of dense. I think he was around 300 pounds at the time. <laughs> he's only 5'8", isn't he? 5'9"? Yeah. No, he's, he's under 5'8", I think. Oh, God. He's a monster. Yeah. Yeah, he's a monster. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Jason, any final thank yous before we go, mate, before I let you go? Just thank you guys for uh, having me on and everything. And uh, of course, you know, thank my coach, Chris Aceto, for pushing me. Thank my wife for, you know, dealing with me. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'm just excited for this. I'm excited for this uh, new challenge and to keep growing with it and keep getting better. So mm. uh Look forward to a better package in Chicago and then even better at the Olympia. If you can do 50% of what you did from Tampa to New York for Chicago and then another 13% again for the Olympia, I think you're going to I think you're going to round off a very 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 successful year mate for 2020. I think really are, I think you really, I really are. Appreciate it. I really appreciate it and 
you know, as far as I'm concerned, after New York, this has already been a pretty successful year, and I just want to keep pushing and making it even better. Good, good. That's good to hear. It's good to hear, good to hear that energy, and good to hear that you're still push. Like I was, I was thinking, please don't say you're shutting it down for the rest of the year, because it would, because <laughs> you know when you've gone eleventh to second, and it's like you really, you know, you got a big talking point. Everyone was talking about it on the on the forums, on the on social media from New York. Everyone was like, "Whoa, what happened to Jason?" You know, you <laughs> it looked so good. It was so close between you and Detrick, and it was such a good show as well. Such an exciting show. So I think you should just keep that momentum going, mate. Really keep it going, and and keep it going right up to the Olympia, mate. Because because, thank you. You know, Thank imagine you. I had the same thought because I originally was going to shut it down. No. And the, the funny thing is, when Aceto, when you say you're shutting it down, Aceto throws out your plan. <laughs> he's like, he's like, all right, he's shutting it. So I messaged him five days later. I was like, let's just do this. I'm going to the Olympia. Yeah. And he said, all right, send me whatever I had you doing because I keep all the emails. <laughs> yeah. He's like, send me whatever I had you doing because you said you're shutting it down. I threw everything out. Oh, okay. <laughs> But I, I keep every email, so I know exactly what we do every time. Good. And I send it to him. He's like, perfect. Let's start this. Let's go. And my metabolism has just gone through the roof. This is this is one of those preps where I feel like I'm slacking off because everything's working so well. That's a very, very good sign. Yeah. That's a very so, good sign. That, that means uh, that like... My- yeah, like you said, you want, you needed a um, few more weeks after Tampa to really bring it. It shows that maybe the best is yet to come. If you're feeling yeah. like this and your the energy levels are good and you're feeling confident and you, you know you, you're riding off that high off that sort of appearance, you know how good you looked at 200 pounds at the New York Pro. Um, I tell you what, mate, Keon versus Jason at the Chicago Pro, that is going to be exciting. I'm going to be I'm going to be glued to the group chat and on the MD forum <laughs> for that one, mate, because that's going to be really. I'm really. I really hope you two get first call out together and it's right, you know, you switch next that to each other awesome. and yeah, it's going to be good, isn't it? That would be really awesome. That would be a fun battle. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay. Well, only a few weeks to go. So. Yep. Time yeah. to push it and come in and bring my best ever. All right then, mate. Well, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully see you at Las Vegas. I'll see you there. All right then, Jason. All right. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Take care. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle here at the On The Rise Media Studio with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And we are joined all the way from America, because I don't know what state he's in, Shelby Starnes! Yay! <laughs> Shelby, how are you, mate? I'm great. How are you, Giles? I'm really good, mate. So, Sorry, um, what state are you in? Not not state, but where, I, you, are, where you live? I'm in Michigan. I'm in Michigan. Okay. Uh, just outside of Detroit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now you said up before we started filming, so you don't really do many interviews. So I'm I'm honoured, mate. I really am because uh, uh, you're a hugely respected name in the industry, in the bodybuilding industry. I've known about you for some years now. Um, now I think it's safe to say you're you're very you're best known as a female coach. Why why did you why did you choose to sort of coach females um, in in particular? Um, when I started coaching, I, I coached males as well. Hmm. Um, and just over the years, I, I think I I click better with with females. Um, not not just in terms of getting results, but I just I feel like they're easier to work with for me okay. um, mentally. And I'm not saying all females, um, but just you know, g- generally speaking, I, I I like the the, the female mentality. Um, I, I just click click better with females, and I, I think I get better, res, you know, I get better results with them as well. Yeah. And it's just, I, I used I used to work with both, and over the years I've sort of decided, hey, I want to focus more on females. You know, why not? Why not um, focus on one niche like that and yeah. see what I can do? So, so, so was it purely yeah, because mostly, you felt- mostly? Sorry, go on. Mostly female bodybuilding, women's physique, and um, figure. Yeah. So why do you why did you think? Is it purely because you got you felt that you got better results from the females than you did with the guys? To a certain extent, yes. I mean, a, a, a while ago, I actually there there was a point when I I struggled with females and I felt like they were tricky and I almost felt like I was going to stop coaching females and just 
coach males. Wow. Okay. Um, and then, and then something, some paradigm shift happened and, you know, the stars aligned or something and Hmm. I started getting a little bit better at it. And then, um, you know, I, you, you know, Jamie Pinder is correct. Yes. Yes. Jamie Pender is a women's physique Olympian. She's been on the Olympia stage, I think, three times now. Mm-hmm. J- Jamie Pender was, I worked with Jamie Pender um, in 2011, 2012, and um, she got her pro card in women's physique. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, she ne- the, the following year, she did the Chicago Pro, and that was her pro debut, and she won the Chicago Pro. That was 2013. She won the Chicago Pro with straight ones. Every yep. judge had her in first. And she went to the Olympia. And so that that was right when women's that was the first women's physique Olympia was 2014. Yeah, 13, I believe or it was, no, 2013 was when um was uh, when uh, DLB won, wasn't it? And uh, Malakan was second. Dana, yeah, Dana Lynn Bailey. Yep. So that was 2013 and that I think that kind of like started garnering some interest in, in people working with me, hmm. uh, for, for a women's physique. I started getting approached more by, by women's physique competitors. And then it just kind of grew from there, you know, st- grew steadily from there. Hmm. That was 2013. And, you know, I've been, I've been very fortunate every year since then I've had at least, at least one competitor in the women's physique Olympia, um, every, every year that they've had it. Uh, I mean, wasn't, sorry, wasn't and, Jamie Pinder second in the Olympia one year? I've got it in my head that she was second. Was she no, second? Ja- no. Was she fifth? Jamie hasn't been second. She was top five though, wasn't she, at the Olympia? She was fifth, and that was with um, Matt Jansen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I mean, her conditioning was absolutely second to none uh, as a women's physique. She's, yeah, she, to, to be honest, she was one of my favorites, actually. She's always been one of my favorite women's physique competitors. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Matt, 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 Matt worked with her that year and Matt did um, an excellent job with her. Good. Well, you actually, um, you prepped my ex-girlfriend once, didn't you? For, for her J- Japanese guest posing. Rosie, what's her name? <laughs> Rosie Hart. Sorry. I forgot her name then. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, no, she, I mean, I, I could, because that's when you really came up on my radar. Because obviously I, I was, I would just, I would discuss with her, you know, uh, what you did. And she just, she was, she was just, she had nothing but amazing things to say about it. She said she was just, uh, she said you were so easy to work with. She said you got back to her straight away. She was happy with the results. And uh, she said it was a really, really good, positive experience working with you uh, to get her in condition for that guest posing. Yeah, I, um, I, I enjoy it. I mean, I, I, I used to compete myself um, and I, I don't compete anymore, but I, I love coaching. And so mm. I... I take it just as seriously as, you know, when I competed myself. So um, that helps. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of, of course. course. We'll come back to your competing a little, a little bit later. But um, we had um, the real Lois Lane, your Rachel Daniels. The just, I mean, what a, what a sensational story for 2020. She wins the Junior USA's, turns pro that day. A week later, does the New York Pro, uh, obviously in Tampa, wins that? I mean, what? Uh, I mean, surely this is this is probably one of your highest profile clients at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Rachel is uh, Rachel is an all star, and it's kind of funny. Her story is kind of funny because she emailed me. It was about eight weeks before her first show, which was the t- the Tampa NPC show. Yes, and the. The, the 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 title of the email was emergency prep inquiry <laughs> you know this emergency emergency inquiry can can you help me get out of this situation <laughs> yeah she wasn't she didn't feel like she was in a good spot at the time um and she wasn't you know she needed uh, uh to make some changes um but yeah it, it, we it was kind of funny uh we, we because I mean, she just completely turned it around, and she's won all three shows now. Yeah. Um, she's won all three shows. She's Amazing. won all three shows with straight, with straight straight ones at all at every show. She had you know all, all judges had her in first. Shelby, so. Shelby, I'll be honest. Um, I was writing about her for my MD column last night, and I was saying that along with her and Hunter Labrada, 
they surely, now they've qualified for the Olympia, surely those two are going to be uh, getting the Rookie of the Year award. Because to turn pro and then a week later win a pro show, a big show like the New York Pro, go into the Olympia, because I think she's going to do great at the Olympia. I think she's really, really good. I mean, her back shots are absolutely, to be honest, I saw, I, the first time I ever knew about her was I saw a back shot of her, I think it was about five days out, and they said, this girl's just won the USA. She's going to win the New York Pro. She's a favorite going in. And I was like, instantly, I was like, wow, this girl's absolutely incredible. So, yeah, so you've really got to... So you're saying that she wasn't in a good spot eight weeks out from the Tampa, which was what, 10 weeks out? from? How many weeks out was that from the New York Pro? 11? Yeah, about 11 or so. so Probably what, what, 11, 11 before New York. Yeah, so you say she wasn't in a good spot. Was that mentally or physically, or was she just not... Was that just a prep not going well? Her prep wasn't going well. I don't remember exactly what she was doing at the time with, um, you know, previously on, on the, I, I don't remember what her diet and everything was like, but yeah. um, we, we needed to get things moving along a lot faster than they were. Um, so we did that. And I mean, she's just gotten better. I mean, we, I learned more about her physique every, every time she competes, we get a little bit better. Um, yeah. And now, and I mean, she, she told you on the show, she's relatively new. I mean, she's, she's very new to the sport. She can, she can make a lot of, she's, she's just beginning to tap her potential, mm. you know, she's, and at, at, at 28, she just turned 28. Amazing. She's got a long, a very long, uh, good horizon for her right now. Um, you know, we're heading into the Olympia. We're what are we, thirteen or fourteen weeks out around there, roughly. Yeah. And um, she's she. I, I want to see her add some muscle to her upper body, and um, I mean, she's just a workhorse. She does whatever you say. I mean, she responds well too. She has good genetics. She yeah. has a good metabolism, um, but she's also a, a you know type A personality. Uh, crossing her T's, dotting her I's, making sure everything's perfect. She'll email me questions on some things that mm. are definitely very anal questions. Good. Um, I'll be honest. But that, that's, sorry. That's, sorry, that, she... that's, that's what you need to succeed, though. That's yeah. what you need to succeed. I mean, some people, some people might have the genetics and everything, but if they're not tunnel vision, they don't, they don't maximize their potential. Yeah. I mean, she, um, she's what, they, five they, foot they, two? She's five foot two. I mean, I can't imagine she's more than what, 57, 58 kilos or? She's five foot one. And, um, all right, I think she's five one. Uh, and yeah, on stage, she's about 130, 130 pounds. Yeah. And now that's probably a little bit more. That's probably a little bit more than 56. Yeah, but I'm, 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 she sent me a video and uh, Derek Lunsford was like kind of shouting. He wasn't even spotting her. He was just shouting encouragement. And she was hack squatting five plates. And I said to her, I messaged her, I DM'd her and I said, I said, five plates. I said, you, I, I was expecting that for like two reps and you, you banged out. Like, I, forget, I, did, I didn't count maybe like 10, 12 reps. Or something. She says, oh, that's not even my PB. She said, I've done seven plate hack squats at five foot one and 130 pounds. I mean, that, to be honest, that blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's a she's a phenom, and um, she's she's definitely one to watch. I'm yeah. I, I'm excited. She's eating a lot right now. We're you know we're we're 13 or 14 weeks out, and she's I keep on increasing her food because she handles it so well. She's having she gets three muffins a day right now. I mean, she's eating probably she's eating seven or eight meals a day. Wow, she's close to 400 grams, close to 400 grams of carbs. Um, yeah. No, no cardio right now, just training, you know, and just trying to, to maximize as much as we can. She won't really need to start dieting until maybe, you know, eight weeks out or, or, or maybe even a little bit closer than that. I'm, I'm just wondering if she actually sleeps because when she responds to my DMs and I'm working out like the American kind of time difference because obviously I'm here in the UK. And she responds like, you know, like saying, like if I message her in the morning, she'll respond and it must be like four or five o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the month. She must be doing she's, cardio or, I mean, <laughs> she's on a similar, we're, we're, her and I are on a similar schedule. I get up really early too. Hmm. Um, yeah, she's up around, she, she'll update me around five or so. Wow. I think she gets up around four, four or five. Hmm. 
I, like I said to her in the interview, which you, which you saw, I'm, I'm really excited to see her readable bicep uh, next to Shanique. I'd love to see her stood next to Shanique and Sarah Vigalas, Villegas. Um, because, um, yeah, the, these newcomers, we like Sarah Villegas did last year. She went straight in second. She got good, good call outs. She got the, you know, she got the look. And I really hope she gets like first or second call out because I really want to see her next to those, you know, like Coelho, Villegas, uh, Shanique. I just I really want to see that. She's she definitely has the potential. We just got to got to lock it down and make it happen. Yeah. So, um, you, I mean, what would you say would your be your apart from um, uh, Jamie Pinder? You've worked with Autumn Swenson. She won the Arnold Classic in was it twenty sixteen? Autumn, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this I work. With Hela, I work with Hella Trevino. Oh wow! You've had Hella on your show. She won the Rising last year. She won. She won Tampa Pro last year, and she won the Rising Phoenix World Women's Bodybuilding. Uh, she, world champ. I mean, that Rising Phoenix is basically the Olympia. She's the number uh, one. She's the number one. Building. Yeah, she's te- she's on right. in the in the data and the rankings. She is she is literally classed as the number one. And in, in, so, I mean, uh, how do you think she'll do? Uh, what, what do you think about Iris Kyle coming back to the Miss Olympia this year? I think that'll be interesting. Um, Iris is always a threat. You know, I, Iris is has more Olympias than anyone. Um, so it'll it she hasn't been on stage in a while, but mm-hmm. that that probably means nothing. Um, I think it really just comes down to if if you know is everybody going to bring their a game, come in at a hundred percent, and then what do the judges want to reward? You know, mm-hmm. um, body bodybuilding, women's bodybuilding coming back to the Olympia, and this kind of being the inaugural year. It'll, it, it's kind of setting a, pre, a precedent with what the look that they reward. Do they do they want to go back? Do they want to go back to rewarding the look that they did when yeah. Iris was winning, or do they want, or do they want to do something slightly different? Yeah, I don't know. All, all we all we can do is hope everybody comes in at their best, you know, their personal one hundred percent, and then the judges can figure it out. Why do why do you think it is that the the female bodybuilders are so good at a later age? Because these women, like you said, like you know, Iris hasn't been on stage in seven years, but she's still she's always every time I've ever seen her in the last seven years, she looks like she's six weeks from stepping on stage. She's not Mr. B, even though she's had no shows to train for. Why do you think it's these women like uh, Irene Anderson? I mean, I know she's certainly over forty. You know, a lot of these women are kind of over 40 yet they still I mean like Betty Parisa when she was competing she was like in her late 50s and she was still managing to not just look good but actually improve why do you think that is well I think you have there are a lot of older female bodybuilders that look good but um I think you have to be careful about um falling prey to something called survivorship bias where you're not you're you're not seeing all the ones that failed um there are there are tons of there are tons of bodybuilders both male and female that are not that are not amazing and you don't see them because they don't get the press right no one's posting they're not going to the top of instagram because no one, they're not impressive. No one wants to look at them. People only want to look at the impressive ones. So we kind of get these blinders and we say, oh, this is what, this is what a 45 year old female bodybuilder is. Like apparently, you know, all all 45 year old females should look like that. When that's that's not the case. You, I mean, you you you're looking at just the very cream of the crop, and you can come up with a handful of examples, but for every handful of examples you come up with, I can list dozens of females that are in the same age bracket that are not looking good. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. mean that. To sound, no. I don't mean that to sound negative or anything. I'm just trying to be realistic and say, sometimes we get blinders on and we're only, we're only seeing the best of the best. Mm. That's like, you know, that's like someone from, there's a thing that happens in America, uh, in the U.S., where they see all these bodybuilders from Europe, 
and they say, wow, European bodybuilders, they get so dry and hard and crazy. Like, what are they doing? They must be doing different drugs or whatever. But there's, I know, and you know this as well as I do, there's tons of bodybuilders in Europe that are crap. Hmm. They don't look like anything, yep. but they don't get any press. Hmm. No one's posting pictures of them because they're not the good ones. Yeah. That's, I mean, it would almost be like someone from Europe looking at Jay Cutler and being like, oh gosh, I'll, 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 what are they doing in the USA? Yeah. What are they doing in the US? Because look at Jay Cutler. Hmm. When it's like, dude, go to any gym and most people don't look like that. Yeah, I, um, I think I think so when with, Do, I think I, when Do, I think when Dorian Yates was around, I think he kind of created a bit of a mystique that we were all training in you know dirty basement gyms and you know doing something very very different from the Americans. I think it kind of uh, scuppered things a little bit there, you know. Right. So I think that's part of I think that's part of it, but I I do think that generally speaking, women can compete longer than men um, at that really high level. Uh, I think the drugs take more of a toll on the men. Um, and, 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 you know, obviously I'm talking about the high level Olympian, yeah. um, ass assisted competitors for a male. Most, most males are starting to tap out around, you know, late thirties, early forties. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, of course you get the rare anomaly like Dexter Jackson or something like that, but most people, if they're pushing their body at a high level, I mean, look at Jay Cutler. He 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 started kind of falling back a bit in his in his you know late thirties, early forties, um, and he I mean he could try to come back now, and he would look amazing compared to a gym rat, but he's not going to you know fare well against the top guys that are younger. Yeah. Um. And and, and for women, for women, uh, again. You've got to have a woman that's got great genetics, great metabolism, doesn't have stubborn, weak body parts or injuries or, you know, there's got to be all these stars aligned correctly. But if you do have all those stars aligned correctly and you've got someone like Hella Trevino, yeah. they, 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 can, they can go a little bit longer. I think their bodies are a little, little bit more resilient. Plus, I've spoke to Helen. She said she does like a 20-week prep. I don't know many guys that do a prep that long. She preps a long time. She's, um, yeah, we, start, we started, I mean, we're, she updated me yesterday, and uh, she's ahead of, she's very motivated this year. She's, because the <laughs> Olympia is coming back. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is her, this is her window of opportunity. Yes. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you something interesting about Hella. Hella won the Rising Phoenix in maybe 2016, I believe it was. Uh -huh. um, I wasn't working with I wasn't working with her, but she won the Rising Phoenix in 2016, mm -hmm. and that year she was 158 pounds on stage. Okay. And la last year, last year we won the Rising Phoenix. That was our first year working together. Her stage weight last year was 174 pounds. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that's 16, that's 16 pounds heavier on a five foot five <laughs> female frame. And, and she was not soft last year. She was hard as nails. Uh, Shelby, I'll be honest. And this year. Mm. So go on. Go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. I thought. I, this. Sorry, I thought a Tampa look was absolutely sensational. By the way, that was that was our first show together. But I knew she could be better. I knew she could be a little bit tighter and heavier. Yeah. Um. And so that's what we did for Rising Phoenix. She was 16 pounds heavier, and this year, she I think she's added just during the off season and everything. I think she's added at least four pounds. Wow. Of, of lean tissue. Wow. So, so, I mean, that's, she, she's nearing 180 on stage at five foot five, I think she is. Whoa. I mean, I remember the girl, the ladies in the 90s, they were kind of a, around 140, 150 pounds was a really big lady back then. It was like 130, 140. So to have those kind of size, you know, female bodybuilder athletes, I mean, that's incredible. So do you see it? Do you see, who do you see the top three being if they all bring their best at the Olympia this year? I think it's 
I mean, Hella has got to be in there. I mean, Hella's the reigning champion, yeah. and she's. I mean, it looks like she's going to be better this year. Um, Iris, I can't, I can't imagine Iris won't be up there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mar Margie Martin, Margie Martin has has won the Rising Phoenix uh, yeah. at least a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. She got she got Margie got uh, second last year to Hella, mm -hmm. so that's. That's probably your top three there, hmm. um, assume, assuming they all come in at 100%, and assuming that, assuming that the judges say that's the look that we want to reward. Yeah, yeah. Right. Obviously, in 2012, they they um they were obviously the the pro league, whoever were the IFBB were were not happy with the way that the kind of female body was getting so extreme. So they brought in women's physique as a way to really kind of rewind it, kind of 25, even 30 years to get the kind of the size of the athletes down. Um, now I, I think they cut. I, I don't. <laughs> I think they maybe thought that female bodybuilding was just going to kind of just just drift away, but it kind of hasn't, and I think it's actually thrived. Do you think the women's physique class is now it's going uh, uh, to be to to that to its detriment now that female bodybuilding is really back as, uh, and officially at the Olympia? Well, let me make a comment, and then I'll need a clarification. Okay. I think Jake Wood. I think Wings of the Strength is primarily responsible for the resurgence in, in women's bodybuilding. Jake Wood and Wings of Strength mm -hmm. have always have always supported women's bodybuilding. They've they've had tons of women's bodybuilding shows in the IFBB over the last handful of years. So yeah. props to Jake. And Jake just bought the Olympia. Um Wings, you know Jake bought the Olympia and Jake is a huge fan of of women's bodybuilding. So that's that's only going to help women's bodybuilding you know he's he's he was helping it he was helping br bring it back to the olympia before he bought the olympia and then that's only going to grow yeah um but but you, you, your question i guess i i don't understand 100 you think do you think women, that women's bodybuilding will impact women's physique correct in what way i'm just saying do you think it will because I think the idea was uh, women's physique was to substitute female bodybuilding to try and rewind it, and they were just hoping maybe it was just going to kind of go away. Jake Wood kept it going, Tim Gardner, all these amazing promoters. And, it, and in fact, I think it kind of grew. New faces were coming through. And, um, and women's physique, I feel, is kind of, I think it's very, very popular, but I feel like it's kind of plateaued in the last couple of years. I think it's, um, do, you, do you think female body will end up overtaking, um, you know, certainly the Olympia in terms of fan interest and, uh, well, just fan interest? I don't think I don't think women's bodybuilding will take over for women's physique. I think they both. I mean, there's definitely people that are fans of both. Yeah. Um, but I think when women's physique first started out, they didn't really know exactly what they wanted it to be at first. They mm -hmm. said they didn't want striations or too lean yeah. or anything like. I mean, this is going back to you know 2012, 2013. Um, and obviously, it's progressed to be pretty intense since then. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's based lightweight, lightweight bodybuilding now. Sorry, Shelby, we lost a bit of connection there. Um, you were saying. So, one question I'd like to know: If you look at 2016 Olympia when Julia Malik Malakam won, um, her condition was good, but she was not shredded. There was very little striations. 2017, she came back with a look that she told me personally she didn't feel comfortable with. And I think that's partly why she retired, because she didn't she didn't feel her physique looked any better, more striated. But I felt from 2017 onwards, the conditioning really got to an extreme where it was not in line with, like you said there just a few couple of minutes ago, you said they don't want striations. But I mean, literally, if there's girls on stage without striations, they're not even making top five at any women's physique pro show. Do you agree? Yeah, you have... Basically, you have to be striated. You have to be lean enough to be striated. Hmm. You have to be that lean, but then you shouldn't dry out too much. Yeah. If you dry out too much and you start getting grainy, that's too much. Hmm. Um, so a lot of it is just a lot of it is just manipulation at the very end. Don't dry out too much, and also be very careful with your presentation. Hmm. If you have you. You basically need the striations, but be careful how you show them. Don't don't overemphasize 
the fact that you've got you know a, a grainy ass basically yeah 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 uh, you, have, you have to keep it feminine um you know i mean all the, all these top gals have striated glutes there's no there's no question about it if you don't have if you don't have striated glutes you better be just completely amazing in every other aspect to to hope for a a top call out Okay. Uh, especially at the Olympia. Okay, so let's just take the Juliana Malakan 2016 Olympia and the 2017 Olympia as those examples. 2016, she did not have striated glutes, but I felt like she she had a, an amazing package. 2017, she had striations, and I, I agree with her. I don't think her physique was as appealing. I, I felt like she lost some of her lines, some of her roundness. Which do you prefer and why? Um... I probably preferred the previous year, the more round look. Mm. But I mean, Juliana is someone that, like I like I was just saying, she's got so many other assets going for her. Mm. She's phenomenal. You know, if if you're if you're a women's physique competitor and you don't look like Juliana, if you don't have those genetics, you don't have that roundness and the tiny waist and everything, mm. you might need to like there's some people that might need to have conditioning be their calling. That's how they get noticed is yeah. is from conditioning because they have, they don't have the genetic you know they were not dealt that that hand so yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I, I don't I like a little. I'm, they're they're both impressive. They're both crazy impressive. Mm. I, you know, it's it, it's it's a toss up. It's, it's apples and oranges. Do you think Shanique Grant is beatable? Um, yeah, you do. they're all beatable. <laughs> There's no one that's not beatable, especially if they come in off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think is, I mean, Shanique, I've never even seen her even remotely off. I mean, I mean, for me, I felt like she's, she last year, she was smaller. She was almost like take away the delts and the legs. And she's almost kind of, I've seen bigger figure girls. So, cause I'm, I'm a little bit, sometimes I get a little bit confused between the delineation of the, the criteria for you know, women's physique and figure. I feel like sometimes there's um, some of the some of the bigger girls are actually in figure. What do you think? Yeah, figures. I mean, and that's that's just the progression of figure right now. Figure's crazy now. Figure the 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 line between figure and women's physique is is very small. You know, it's easy, easily blurred. Hmm. Um, I mean, if you go back to if you go back to vigor when Nicole Wilkins was winning, oh, yeah. that's a complete, <laughs> that's a completely different um, uh, look that they were rewarding back then. So yeah, I think w women's figure has definitely gotten more muscular yeah. and uh, more conditioned. I, I remember um, when I got, um, I kind of got uh, heat for saying uh, Natalia Coelho, cause she was, um, she was, um, I think she won four or five pro shows as a figure. And I said, that that lady in 2017, I think she needs to move for physique. And they were saying, but yeah, but she's winning pro shows as a figure. I said, yeah, but quads are too big. You know, do you ever have clients come to you and say which category? Do you ever advise them on what category to do if their physique starts, you know, developing in certain areas? Um, they'll ask for my, I mean, I, if I work with someone that's at the pro level, they usually know what they want to do, right. you know, um, they, they they've usually been doing it long enough and they're pretty confident or if they start growing so much i i i work with a lot of people that are um women's physique pros that have moved to women's bodybuilding do you mm. know who jill jill bondin jill diorio is yeah incredible condition yeah amazing i I've worked with her since she was an amateur. Um, it's incredible. And she competed in she competed in women's physique, and she won a pro show in women's physique. Uh, she won um, the Puerto Rico uh, mm -hmm. a, a few years ago, and she and she went to the Olympia. And Jill gets into incredible conditioning. That's not really. She gets a little bit grainy, mm. and we don't even use you know that's without a diuretic or thyroid or anything. I mean, she, she's just able to do that and um we we moved we moved her to women's bodybuilding instead of women's physique mm. and she she won her women's bodybuilding pro debut she won chicago a couple years ago yeah and then do you know who asha hadley is asha yes. hadley so yeah 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 she won uh, um tampa 
Savannah. Savannah, sorry, t- Savannah the week before. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we did a, gave her a shout out the other week. It's amazing. Yeah, I worked with her when she was women's physique, and she won she won a women's physique pro show. She made it to the Olympia, and then she took a few years off, and then this mm-hmm. year she came back to women's bodybuilding, and, and I worked with her, and we did the Savannah. That was her pro debut in women's bodybuilding, and she won she won Savannah with straight ones. Yeah. Uh, she's heading to the Olympia, so I've got quite a few that are women's physique that move up to women's women's bodybuilding yeah i mean i saw on her instagram because i was looking into her and i was like who is this who is this lady when she won savannah and it said three-time olympic competitor and i was thinking well she's not female bodybuilding so she must have been physique so i, I spoke to her husband and she said that uh, he was the one who managed to talk her into kind of uh, coming back and then it was obviously you know your help that helped her uh, win her first pro show as a, as a female bodybuilder. Yeah, she's absolutely amazing. And another another great new talent you're working with there that you're kind of helping get to the Olympia. It's incredible. Yeah, I've got, this year I've got Asha at the Olympia, Hella Trevino, and those two are women's bodybuilding. Yep. And then Rachel in women's physique. So it's, it's cool. I mean, I'm a I'm a really lucky guy. <laughs> Absolutely, honestly, it's amazing. You got some really good you got some really good athletes there. So, what percentage of athletes are kind of women's physique uh, that that you coach? I do. I work with a lot of people that don't compete as well. You know, just lifestyle clients. I didn't um, know that. I do. I I do get a lot of I because of because of my marketing. I most I post all women. Um, you know, I. I don't I don't get as many males as I used to. Hmm. Um, but I, I mean, if you look at like my Instagram or whatever, like it's almost all women's physique and women's bodybuilders. Um, I do I do work with a handful of uh, figure competitors as well. And now I've got some some wellness. I don't I don't do bikini, hmm. but I do have some wellness. Um, but yeah, I mean, most those those are my favorite my favorite divisions are women's physique women's bodybuilding and figure. Why don't you work um, with bikini? I don't, I don't, it's not, it's uninteresting to me. Um, I, it's not one that I follow at all. Mm. Uh, and I just like more muscle and more condition, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, if that's what if that's what gets you kind of uh, interested in what you're doing and engaged in what you're doing, then yeah, fair enough. You know, you've you've certainly cornered the market because, like, I can almost I can you're you're one of those coaches where I can almost if you put me if you put me um you know watching a lineup of a show and you told me you had five athletes in that lineup, I I'm pretty sure. I could pick out at least four of them because of the the trademark conditioning and the kind of there's a there's a look there's a the, I, I I can't explain it I can't explain it but I've seen so many of your athletes on your feed and everything like that it's almost like I can almost you know there's like a there's like a Shelby stands you know uh, women's physique a bodybuilding there's almost like a look that you bring I I that's why I just I'm just curious to know you know because because I talked to some athletes and uh, who, who, who you prepped and they say there's a lot of kind of um, there's a lot of kind of support, uh, not emotionally, but kind of um, kind of emotional support. I'm trying to think of the the right phrase. Really, you give a lot of um, encouragement, not just with you know with diet, but like the psychological side. That's what I'm kind of getting at. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty um, hands on with with clients, yeah. and for me, you know, to get to get the best results out of people, you have to really pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't I can't give someone a diet plan and say, hey, run this for a week and then let's see how you look. Uh, I mean, y- you can do that like in the off season or something like that. But when it's showtime, yeah. you, you, you need to be you need to be seeing how they're responding to different variables all the time. So, you know, if that means you're checking in every two or three days or sometimes daily or more than that, like you. Because everybody's everybody is so. I mean, at at the end of the day, when you're stepping on stage, you need to be shredded and yeah. you need to be full. They're, they're, those are the two things. You need to be shredded and you need to be full. But how you get shredded and how you get full yeah. can be completely different for one individual to another, and it can change over time. What got you shredded, or what was working two weeks ago, might not work this week, and. So it's a lot, it's very, it's labor intensive. You know, I mean, you really need to stay on top of things and 
get lots of feedback so you can be ready to change course um, w- when needed. It needs to be acknowledged as well that you're actually, um, from from the feedback and my, my own personal experience of what I've known with athletes you've prepped, you're very focused on health as well. And I think that's something that really, really needs, I think that's something that really separates the good coaches from the very, very good coaches like yourself, is that you're very focused on physical and mental health. That's That, that needs to be acknowledged. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a package deal. Like we, we always say, you know, people always say mental health and physical health, but they're the same thing. Like you can't, there's not really a duality. Like they're, yeah. it, they're one and the same. Like if you're not mentally healthy, like you're not going to be physically healthy. And if you're not physically healthy, you're not going to be mentally healthy, but they're not, they're not really a different thing. I mean, your brain is, we're, we are biological organisms and our brain is a biolog a biological component of our body. Like that's just, you know, they're, they're inseparable. Would you say you're a spiritual person? And, uh, not, not in a traditional, not in a traditional way. I have to say, um, you know, I have been very fortunate to work with a lot of amazing athletes and th- they've had some pretty ast- astonishing results over the years, cool. but yeah. that's because Oh, I've been doing I've been doing this for a while, and I have made every mistake in the book. Mm. Um, so that's <laughs> that's kind of uh, that's helped me to. I don't I don't like making the same mistake twice. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, you know, quite often I know what does what what's not going to work or or what I shouldn't do, mm. um, and and then you. Ex- and then you experiment with the uh, variety of, variety of things that might work, and and see which that that individual responds responds best to. Come on, the Shelby, have you got any more Rachel Daniels up your sleeve, tucked away? <laughs> any any of, any of my clients that are listening to this are going to be offended if I don't <laughs> mention their name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, because I, I just. I think, I mean, especially with this year and obviously everything's been going on, I think it's a real, it's really exciting when we get like a Hunter Labrada or we get a Rachel um, Daniels coming, you know, and they kind of hit the ground running and they all look, you know, and it's, 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 it's nice to see new faces, but, you know, guy, you know, just, just doing well from the outset, you know, with people like yourself helping them. I just think it's, um, it, it's just, yeah, it just really adds a lot of excitement to, to, to the sport, you know? Yeah, Rachel. Rachel is Rachel's phenomenal, and we've become good friends. Uh, you know, over the over the last few months, um, I'm I'm really excited for her and, and looking forward to seeing how the relationship develops. I also want to give a shout out to Kenny Wallach. Oh yeah, you've probably heard Kenny's name, of course. Uh, before Kenny, after 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 Rachel won Junior USA's, she won her pro card at Junior USA's. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Kenny. Um, Kenny and I talk a lot, and he was there. And I said, "Kenny, I've got this gal. She just won her pro card in women's physique, and I want her to do the New York Pro next week. I want you to work with her. Can you work with her? Like they're both there in in Charleston together." Oh wow! I said, "You guys, can you?" And he said, "Where is she? I want to meet her right today." <laughs> Fantastic! And I want to work with her in person. Yeah. I want to work with her in person. And he was able to do that. They were able to connect in that, you know, that afternoon they were able to work together for, I don't know, at least an hour, hour and a half. Brilliant. And he made some big changes that were game changers yeah. uh, for her at the New York Pro. Really helped her present herself, um, you know, much better for the, for the pro stage. So wow. Ken, Kenny and I are, are like this. He's my, my brother. That's fine. Yeah, Kenny Wallach, I mean, he's, he helped Ian Valier with his posing, um, you know, just with things like – because. It really frustrates me as a journalist, as a fan, as whatever, you know, to see, you know, good bodybuilders, good pros, male or female, and they can't even hit the compulsories properly because all that work, all that effort it's spread out over those seven or eight poses and they can't get them right when all it would take is something, someone like Kenny Wallach spending one hour and saying, look, you know, you need to hit your frontal bicep like this, your riddle bicep like that. You know, these little tweaks, they make a huge difference to the presentation of the physique. So, yeah, Kenny, you and Kenny Wallach, that's a a hell of a team up that. Yeah, Rachel and Shelby and Kenny, that's uh, (laughs) that's, uh, 
I mean, I, you know, with, with posing, one thing, there's a lot of misconception with posing. A lot of people, uh, Kenny does a lot of work on Skype and FaceTime like this. Yeah. And a lot of people think, a lot of people think that can't work. Like that can't be as good as someone in person. And so they go work with, they go work with Joe Blow in their gym that did some show in the eighties or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't know, that doesn't know anything. And yeah. they think that's better because it's in person. Yeah. Trust me, Kenny knows how to handle it. Mm-hmm. This Kenny knows, Kenny does this full time and he works with thousands of people uh, online. So I would, you know, don't be hesitant about Skype or FaceTime. And the other thing, the other thing about posing, a lot of people tell me, oh, my posing's fine. I pose an hour a day or I pose two hours a day. And it's like, that doesn't matter if you're posing wrong. You're actually reinforcing bad posing. Yeah. You could, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you could pose 24 hours a day, but it does if you're not doing the right posing, 10, 15, 15 minutes of good posing will always trump eight hours of shitty posing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like it's it's not a it's not about how much time you spend posing. Oh, I'm four weeks out. I'm I'm posing two hours a day. Well, hire Kenny and work with Kenny for 15 minutes, and it'll be way more beneficial to you than than spending hours a day or adding in adding in some new drug or doing something, you know, you can, you can make yourself look 10 pounds bigger with a couple posing tweaks instead of increasing your milligrams 500 here and there or whatever, you know, and, and posing has no, posing has no health detriment. (laughs) There's no, there's no risk. There's no health risk. There's no legal risk. It's, uh, it's, it's just, uh, is, you know, move, move your elbow here, move your ankles here, or whatever. So, well, I, I'll, I, I, I'll step off my, <laughs> I'll step off my. Step off, but, yeah, calm down, yeah. calm down. Well, I, I do know a guy that snapped his calf once doing a readable bicep on stage. Who? I knew it was a bodybuilder called John Citrone, very famous British bodybuilder, competed against Arnold, oh, yeah. and he was he was. John Citrone, yeah, and he uh, is he actually snapped his calf on stage. He hit a riddle bicep, put his leg back, and and his calf went twang. Wow. So yeah, wow. so it's not exactly like, true what you've said there, Shelby. So it, there is some risk. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, given that you we um, you were an amazing male bodybuilder, do you follow the the, the male pro bodybuilding, especially? Um, a little bit. I'm not. It's not real. I'm not a huge, crazy fan. You know, I have, I have limited hours in my day. Yeah. And um, I, I spend a lot of time working. So when I'm not working, I, I often find my, I try to do something non bodybuilding related to decompress or whatever. What like? I read a lot. I walk a lot. I ride my bike a lot. Um, hang out with my dog. <laughs> I imagine Just, you I imagine you were someone who's got one of those flotation tanks in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. Or whale not, noises or not something. Not yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just that popped into my head. I have no idea what. So, um, I mean, even if you do follow, you must follow the scene slightly. What um, have you got? Any thoughts yeah. on uh, who will win the Olympia this year? Well, if Phil comes back, I think Phil's going to be very hard to beat. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know anyone that can handle Phil, even if Phil's at ninety percent. Um, I think he can beat any of the other competitors that he would be up against. Mm. Well, Who else is going to be in it? Brandon here? Curry, Flex Lewis, uh, Rowley Winkler, Dexter Jackson, Steve Kuklo, um, Hadi Shupan, William Bonak. I feel like I've missed. Uh, Sean Roden's not doing it. Um, so. I don't think any of those can beat Phil wow. uh, unless he's and Phil and Phil wouldn't come in at less, you know, Phil's not going to come in at less than 95%. Um, hmm. So, so just say a top six Olympia guy came to you and said, Shelby, um, I follow your work. I, I see what you're doing. I re- I want to change coaches. Will you coach me? What would you say to them? I would suggest they work with a different coach. Wow. Um, okay. okay. I, I think Andrew, 
there's a coach named Andrew Vu that's very good right now. Yeah. Uh, he works with Hunter. Uh, he works with Hunter. He works with Natalia. He's he's amazing. Hmm. Um, I would suggest I would suggest Andrew because I just I'm I'm not a male I'm not a, a a male Olympian coach anymore. You know I I know my I I, I stay in my lane. <laughs> Are you I you know I, I I I understand what you're saying, but for me with your knowledge and the fact that you were you were a huge guy that was successful at competing. Are you telling me that, say, just say Phil Heath uh, had a big hissy fit with Hanny Rambod and he said, uh, uh, I've got the Olympia in 12 weeks, please prep me. You'd say no, as an example. I would say no, basically, because that's way more badass than saying yes <laughs> and trying to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that would certainly be, um, yeah, that would certainly be make, make Instagram uh, light up. <laughs> wow so you say no okay so you uh, you literally you you see your niche and that's what you specialize in and that's what you love to do and that's what gets you up in the morning what gives you purpose and gives you you know and gives you kind of and gets you excited for your days prepping women and getting them full getting them shredded and, and getting them to win contests yeah i i i like where i'm at i like all the people that i'm working with you know i couldn't yeah. i couldn't really ask for anything more to be honest i'm I, I i love what i do and i i love the people i work with so yeah. that's that's it well, well that, <laughs> shelby that's, that, that, that's the key yeah that's the that's key the key to success yeah, I guess it is. I get it. Uh, Shelby, um, that was my final question, mate. That's that's literally that's all all and more that I wanted to know. That's fantastic. I know we didn't really touch upon your bodybuilding, but I get the impression that you probably didn't want to go too much into that, given that you've kind of moved on. And uh, who are you waving to? I, I was I was saying that's I was pushing that to the side. Oh. I was a mediocre. <laughs> Sorry. I was I was okay. You know, I mean, I managed to turn pro, but. You know, it, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. It was a great experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I competed I competed 13 consecutive years, at wow. least one show every year for 13 years. Wow. And I learned a lot, and I'm very grateful for the experience. But, you know, that was a different chapter of my life, for sure. Do you miss being huge? I was never a huge guy. I, I prefer being smaller now. Mm. Okay. Well, that's 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 fair enough, I suppose. Uh, I miss being huge. Uh, well, I, was, I was huge last year before lockdown happened. All the gyms in the UK shut. So, um, okay, okay, Shelby, that's been it's amazing, man. I also, are you going to be at the Olympia this year? Um, given that you've got a few competitors in it. No. What? I honestly, this, it's full of shocks. This guy. This is maybe another. I have never been to a. Anytime I've had a competitor win a show, I was not there. What? And I've had lots of people win shows. I have never been at a show where somebody won. But any any show that I have gone to, yeah. they they didn't win. Okay. Any any show that I've gone to win. So you're like a bad luck charm when you're there. <laughs> I am bad luck. If I go to your show, you do not want me to your show. <laughs> You want my you want my ass right here, here in this chair. Right. Okay. So you're on hand. At, so you're there. Okay. So you're there. To, obviously, there on hand uh, to support uh, from from your phone. Because thing is, you said to me you don't have WhatsApp. You don't really do Skype. How do you communicate with your clients? Email. E just by email. Wow. I mean, sometimes they they something they, like they some some sometimes they send me videos on uh, Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Yeah. Or or videos on email. Okay. You, you know, some, you, you I know mean, you, sometimes we talk. On, you know, you can send free videos on WhatsApp as well, mate. You know that, don't you? If it's free to send videos on WhatsApp, you need to download that app. It's revolutionary. It's it's catchy. It's 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 all the rage. <laughs> Giles, Giles, what year? Giles, what year were you born? Uh, just... <laughs> 1976. Uh, 75. Sorry, 76. 75. Uh, se Six. Se 76. Yeah. I'm 77. So. So well, there you go. Now you've got no excuse. You're younger than me. 
Yeah, I got to catch up to you on the tech front. <laughs> All right, then, Shelby. Well, this has been amazing, mate. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, really, 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 uh, yeah, really fantastic. And, and like I said, continued success with your clients, Rachel Daniels, you know, Asha Hadley, you know, uh, Hella Trevino. I mean, I think we're all really super excited to see, you know, Hella versus Margie versus uh, the return of uh, 10-time Olympia champion Iris Kyle. So, yeah, this has been fantastic. And I'm gutted I won't be seeing you in Vegas. I saw you there last year. So um, that's probably why your clients didn't win. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so thank you. And, uh, yeah, well, hope, uh, hope maybe bump into you at one of the American shows soon. All right. Thank you very much, Giles. I, I appreciate it. Uh, your time and uh your enthusiasm and uh thank you look forward to seeing you soon yeah i appreciate yours too thank you shelby okay bye bye And welcome back to MD Global Muscle here at the On The Rise Media Studio with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And we are joined all the way from London, the weary traveller, Samson Dowder. Yeah! Uh, how you doing, guys? How's it going? Mate, I <laughs> mate, I don't even know where to begin. I know. I know, right? Jeez. What? I, I mean, first, first of all, is it good to be home? Oh, man, it's amazing to be home. I mean, you can't imagine, you know, finally be home, back in your home gym, back in, eating your normal food, back on a normal diet. You know, it feels amazing, you know. So, really. I mean, okay, let's, I don't know where to really start or begin or end or it's, yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, we've all been following your journey on, on social media. It's been probably one of the biggest talking points in bodybuilding. I think it's actually been in your favor, actually, because you've gained, you must have gained a yeah. huge amount of oh, fans this I, year because of this. I, massively massive amount of fan support and everything else and it's just been crazy and i gotta say for all the things that seems negative and everything else there's been a lot more positive coming from it and that's why people are like how you doing i'm like look i'm still smiling you know because mm. you know you if you focus so much more on the negative stuff you will just end up feeling just beating yourself up where i'm just feeling negative about it. just look at the positive things that's happening to you because of that you know yeah so tend to just focus more on that and you, I mean, at the end of the day, it's um, one thing that really generates interest in bodybuilding is storylines. And I yeah. think the, the kind of the, the way that you're st all the twists and turns of your story. I mean, I was following all the because you've got some really good content from Korea. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it was this yeah, is yeah. this is like this is so this would make a fantastic documentary if you just collated all that footage. Oh. And you, I, I saw the nice video of you going around the venue and it looked amazing. Yeah. And so it's really we've all been following your journey, mate. So. Honestly, I don't even know what my first question is, Carleen. What's my first question? Uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? Okay, so, um, right. The other day, I saw on uh, I saw the results going out from the career show. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I went absolutely crazy because I didn't fully understand what was going on. I yeah. thought, I saw your name down a second and I was like, how, how has this even happened? Yeah, I know. You know, I mean, it's, some, it's something that, you know, it happened. And obviously, with the way the show was run and everything, else, obviously in quiet and everything else, you kind of think, okay, you know, it is what it is. You know, we look at the scorecards and it's like, okay, you lost by one point. Yeah. And, you know, from my own point of view, I thought, man, come on, man. I thought I had it. Mm -hmm. I was like, come on, this was it, you know. But obviously, just like every every show, bodybuilding, you know, judges might see differently and everything else. So you can only moan and complain about something for so long. And then you just be, you know what, just move on, man. It's, it's, it is what it is, you know. Focus on the next one, you know. And just kind of just move on in that way. I mean, obviously, obviously with everything that built up to the story as well, mm. it's kind of like, uh, it's a painful one. It's, yeah. It's a painful one, you know. I mean, I, when I saw the pictures, I was like, well, at least you got beat by somebody that's really, really good. I mean, that guy is probably, he's, I think he's got an absolutely incredible physique. So it's not like you got, yeah. you got beat by someone clearly yeah. that really was not in your league you got beat by someone yeah. there by one point that really is he's he's, exactly, he's absolutely you know. incredible he's a fantastic bodybuilder oh yeah exactly you know so you kind of you know as i said the things are you kind of look at the upside of it and everything else the only one painful thing is i on two of them pictures actually came out i did not have a clue what i looked like on stage oh really because there was no photos no phones no nothing like literally you came off stage and you're thinking I don't even know what happened. Like I can't, I can't even analyze. I can't see anything. Literally, until he had dropped out yesterday, yeah. I didn't know. I, I literally had no evidence, nothing to actually say. Okay, what what went wrong? What what did you miss? Did you miss your mark? Did you hit it? Well, well, you didn't have anything, you know. Hmm. We know that we what we we know what we looked like before we went to the venue. We knew everything else, but as soon as we walked to the venue, 
you know, we had to sign the contract of silence and wow. obviously completely everything of not posting anything, just completely shut down everything like that. And then they take they took your phone away from you. Yeah. So, so it was almost like, okay, uh, all right, if this is what it is, okay, let's go. So you kind of did the show and everything else. And when you came off stage, you're kind of like, okay, the results are in. And then you're thinking, normally this is the point where you go home, you look at the photos, you look at the videos, you think, man, you know, you start analyzing, okay, what? But at this point, you didn't even have that. Yeah. So when you have, you're calling up your family, you're calling your friends saying, look, we came second. <laughs> you can't, you don't even have anything to just, like show them. You're just yeah. like, you just like, um, yeah, um, they're like, so what happened? Was he good? Why, why, why is that? What? And I'm, you know, you're like, man, I can only tell you what I think, but, you know, without actually having anything in front of you, you're just basically one man speaking and it could come across that you're just basically speaking because you lost. Yeah. So it's, it's like, you just, you just kind of like, look, until something drops out, I don't, I can't even see it myself, you know? Hmm. So it's, it, that's the only one disturbing thing that happened with everything, you know? So you, you got out to Korea, you then were told you had to quarantine for two weeks, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then the show got put back. Am I you know, just trying to go a little timeline of events? And then the show got put back. Well, another two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first part was basically I had to quarantine in the hotel in Korea, in oh. a government-sanctioned hotel room for 14 days. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, proper quarantine. Not, oh, you can go out once a day for a walk or <laughs> you can walk around the hotel. No, you have to be in the room for 14 days straight, night and day, every minute, mm. for the whole 14 days, you know. So... And the thing is, we prepared, we prepared for that when we were going out there. We knew what, what it was. So it wasn't okay. like, okay. So we kind of planned, okay, how are you going to train? How are you going to keep your diet up? I mean, I think getting the food was basically the worst part of it, or the hardest part of it. Yeah. Because at this point, they don't, you, don't, you, can't, you can't call room service. You can't do, they provide the, what they food for you. And you don't make you can't you don't make order. You don't what? say, oh, can I have this? No. So, sorry, sorry, so, what, so what, 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 I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on the food situation. So what, what yeah. kind of food were you given? Given you know your the, own contest prep, you know when you go, you know when you're on a long haul flight in airplanes and they give you them airplane meals eh. in a little pack. Basically, you get that three times a day. What you didn't even have? Yeah. Hang on a minute, you didn't even have bodybuilding food the last two weeks, so you couldn't get your own food. You couldn't get anything delivered. We the way we planned it, basically, we we saw the situation. We called up Korea. We found out okay, what is it? What can we have? What can we have? And we basically got the whole idea of you know what, you got nothing. This is you going on. So when I was going out there. Literally, it was almost like over. We had two days to plan it, so we were like, "Okay, we got my bags out." We said, "Forget trying to pack clothes and everything else. You're gonna be stuck in the Fill it up with as much food as you can." Okay. So we we basically bought the packet of rice, the everything we could grab, and then yeah. we basically all our protein and meat and stuff like that. We basically froze them and chucked it all in the bag. Okay. So we we had a week's worth of meat to kind of have to keep us, okay, we can get past the first week. Okay, cool. And then from that point on, I know the promoters, they were trying to arrange something with the Korean government to send us some food yeah. and some and some weights and stuff like that. And they said, look, they're, trying to, they're going to try to do that. So we think, okay, if we got enough to last the first week, the second week, hopefully, that should have already been sorted by then. Okay, that would be the case. So when we showed up at the hotel, we were like, okay, we're ready for this. We planned it out. You know, we kind of adjusting. The first week wasn't bad. I mean, the first week, nobody even knew I was in Korea. We kept it quiet. We're like, no, nah, don't say anything. Just focus on what you have to do. So the first week, nobody even knew I was there. Yeah. So we kind of did our meals, you know, use the bands, do the any work I can to get the, the work I go in and everything else. We did all that. And then second week, what happens basically, the meat we grab, towards the ending of that first week, they started going off. Oh, no. Small hotel room fridges and stuff like that. So it's almost like a oh sh oh crap. Okay, we gotta have to just eat it here. So we did all that and we had like shake powders and stuff like that. And it was getting to the point where we were thinking it was gonna be a case we're gonna have to survive because all our protein is gonna be from powdered shake and stuff. So <laughs> so luckily the Korean basically the, the producer said that basically the government they tried to all send us food and the government shut it down. Said you can't you can't send anything to them. Why you why? Them you, because apparently if you the idea, their thought is, if they send food to you and you become ill in the room, they're responsible for it. Oh, so they, no. Was that not, that, even, like, so not even a meal prep company? Of, I don't know what they're like in Korea, but they couldn't, there was no no way of getting any food through. To, through. We're not allowing any, anything in. They weren't oh, allowed. Oh, shit. So basically, it was basically a backwards and forward fight. They were fighting with the Korean government trying to get some things over. Yeah. And then it got to the following second week, and it was just about when we were just about to run out of everything, the day before run out, they basically allowed them to send in a box full of protein, uh, full of egg whites. Okay, well, something. 
And we were like, okay, you know, yeah, that's a that's a good start. We got, you know, we got protein. Hey, okay, that's the thing. Yeah. So we basically started surviving on basically white rice and egg whites for the last few last few days of the well, the second week of the quarantine. Yeah. And it was basically just white rice, white rice and egg white diet. Yeah. You know, and we just kind of pushed through that way, and you know, it was it was crazy, yes. but this was basically the situation where it wasn't. It was literally we we planned it, but this is what why it kind of ended up happening. And you think, okay. You don't don't sit there complaining about it. Make do, do yeah. you know, improvise every way you can. You know, you you were already shaped before you went out there. All you gotta do is maintain that look. You know, do whatever you can to maintain that look. So that's basically what we just kind of did. And then on the fourteenth day, when I was just about to come out and say, okay, it was a Thursday before the the show was on a Sunday the weekend. The yeah. Thursday before that, when I was just about to come out of quarantine. Uh, got a text from the promoter saying, "Hey Sam, uh, got bad news. Oh. We're gonna have to promote, we're gonna have to postpone the show by two weeks." Oh, what was your feeling on that? What was that? What was your initial response to that emotionally? <laughs> I mean, it, it like kind words, man. Let's just say that it was not. It wasn't nice. It wasn't anything polite whatsoever. Did you laugh it, or cry? Oh man, but I did. I I literally. I think I did a bit of both. I think I lost my mind a bit. <laughs> After 14 days of being alone, you're you're already losing your you're losing your mind anyway. And when I came out, it was almost like a you, you are you laughing or you got tears coming out of your eyes at the same time. It was a yeah. moment. And that's after you finish screwing and cursing and freaking losing your shit about everything, saying, "Man, this is just you know." So I remember like that point, I was just thinking, "No, this this is just." I was like, "Look, I'm going home. I don't care. I'm going home. I don't give a damn. Yeah. I don't want to know anymore. I'm just going home. This is it. I'm done with doing this stuff. I'm going home." So the promoters kind of like spoken to me and they kind of said to me like, look, we, we want you to stay for another two weeks. We'll cover the cost of your hotel. We'll cover, you know, what you need. If you just, if you can stay for another two weeks, you know, and just bear with it. Yeah. So at that point, you know, you're, you're in rage. You just like, I don't, even the thought of it was like. All that cortisol no. coursing through your veins oh. as well. It's not going to be, I mean, I've Every, seen people like just because so-and-so's in the show smoothing out backstage and you've got all this challenge and weird foods, you know, sporadic eating and kind of locked up in this quarantine, oh. like this, this lockdown, what's it, solitary confinement. Literally was that. Yeah. You know, you, you know on a video call I couldn't I didn't see another face. You yeah, know? yeah. So she so it's almost like, oh no, this is that's it, you know. So we I mean I spoke to my I spoke to my missus, I called her up and said, Look, this is the situation, whatever, whatever. And you know, we kind of like we were losing our crap about it. We thought, okay, you know mm. what? And then she basically said to me, You know what? Just and this was like Thursday morning, she was like, you know, go back to bed, just go to sleep. Just go to sleep, relax, calm down. And then when you wake up, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll think about what we'll do next, okay? Mm. So I went back to sleep, calmed down, slept for an hour, woke up. It's fled it, it's let everything that's happening set in then. And then we called up and we were like, okay, you know what? How can we make this work? Mm. You know, instead of, how can we make, can we, is it possible? Is there a way for us to stay here for another two weeks? So we kind of start breaking it down, going, okay, you're going to be out of this room. You're not going to be in quarantine anymore. You'll be in a proper hotel. That's yeah. a bonus. You'll be able to go to a gym. That's a bonus. Okay. You'll be able to eat properly. That's a bonus. So when you tend to think about it, after the two weeks you've just done, this is a piece of cake, really. Yeah. You know, like, you know what? Okay. Right. Let's do this. Let's go. We've already come this far. Help. Let's keep going. Sure, surely, though, your mindset must be so resilient by this point. The fact that you've come so far this year... Huh? I bet now you're just like you are. You're just seeing any small positive as a huge bonus. Yeah, and this is what it feels like every single time. Yeah. Because you, it's almost like when you've been hit with blows after blows after blows, you just become resilient to it. You, you know, I remember when the first show got cancelled, which was um, South America. Mm. It, that took me like a week to get over it. I was just completely enraged. And then the second one happened, and it was like, oh, it was a few days. And then the next one happened, and it was like, yeah, a day. And I was like, cool, next show. So after a while, it seems like when you get a bad decision, it takes you a lot, lot shorter time to get over it and just move on. As yeah. soon as you think, okay, what we're going to, you think about the bad news happening, you think, okay, what we're going to do next? And as yeah. soon as you can come up with a plan, you already start feeling better. You already start moving on. So, you're, you're con this, rather, so there's so many things going on. You're just constantly looking at the step in front of you rather than yep. what is literally what, behind you in a day ago, a week ago, three weeks ago. Oh yeah. You know what you've done to all the things yeah. you've been through and everything else because we i mean we know that we've been through a lot yeah fair enough we've been through a lot but then you keep thinking about it going when i look back i don't see 
that negative. All I see was, okay, what you had to overcome. Yeah. And you look back and see, okay, but if I didn't go, this wouldn't have happened. If I didn't push, this wouldn't happen. If this didn't happen, I wouldn't have pushed it harder in the gym. If this one, so you tend to start looking at the positive each time mm. and start saying, actually, you know what? All this is showing me is how much, how strong I am, what I'm willing to endure. So, you know what? This next one, let's see what, what could come from it. Let's see what positive can come from it. Mm. So when it happened, after you finally calm down and you're not losing your crap, you then say, okay, well, upside is this. I could be out of here. Upside is I can actually see South Korea. It's not just going to be, yeah. you know, owning a hotel room. Okay, upside is I can eat. Upside, I can go to a gym. You know, so you start thinking, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, this this can work. Fair enough, this can work. You know, so I'm like, okay, let's get it done. So we finally moved out that night. And remember, this quarantine is so tight and it's so fixed that when I was due to come out of the hotel room at midnight down that Thursday. It means midnight on that Thursday. It's not. It's not. Oh well, it's twenty minutes. Yeah, you might as well. You can go now. It doesn't make a difference. It's literally they call you your room phone number. Literally five minutes to midnight and say, you know, get your bags. Have you got your bags back? Whatever. Wow. Okay, midnight you can leave the room, and then you finally get to open your door and walk outside and go. Yeah. Oh, oh crap! Freedom. Okay, I'm, I'm getting at it. You know. Was it like and that he, scene in the Shawshank Redemption when he comes out of the, the pipe of so shit bad. and he goes, Dude, "Yeah, was, freedom"? No, that's 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 uh, Braveheart. Braveheart, freedom. Yeah, Braveheart. Braveheart sorry, Bra- Braveheart and Shawshank Redemption <laughs> in Korea <laughs> oh, yeah. with Samson. He, he was literally felt like that coming out of the hotel room, thinking, "Oh man, this is crazy." Yeah. You know, and you come out and he's just like, "Oh my god!" Like, did you just literally stay in a room for fourteen days straight? Yeah. Doing eating, dieting, doing training, everything else. And you're thinking, wow, you know what? No matter how you look at it, thinking that is something that you you never thought you'd be able to do. Yeah. And you've just accomplished it. Sam- wow. Samson, oh, Samson, did you did you feel at any point that your physique was starting to deteriorate? Because I can imagine the panic. You know when you're like you're you're in a you know you see I, I travel to contest, you're checking your abs every ten minutes and there's nothing changing. And in your eyes you you, don't, you can't trust your own eyes because you're in prep mode. Did you did you feel your physique and what was that like? Every damn time, all the time. Yeah, you know, you're in a room. Normally, you'll be able to have a second eye to come calm you and say, "Look, yeah, that's my point. It's, it's no, it's, it's just in your mind. It's in your head. It's cool. Don't worry about it." But this time, it was like you're looking at it. You're thinking, "This is crap. I'm losing muscle. Oh, this is crap. I'm not. I'm looking holding water. This is." And you're looking in the mirror like everything. So basically, I started. It got so bad to the point where I was like, "Okay, you know what? I'll check myself once in the morning after I do cardio. The rest of the day, I'll be in clothes. I will not look at myself again in the mirror." Good. Because it was literally eating you inside. And I was like, mm-hmm. nah, whatever you do, focus on everything else. Don't worry about it. Because just follow the plan. Don't don't, don't focus on it. Don't look, you know. Good. And did it was basically just getting by like that. Yeah, day, day by day. You know? Did you did you get yourself, yeah. I mean, obviously, you, um, you a strict routine. Uh, did you have the same strict routine every oh. single day in those 14 days in the room? Yep, yep. You had to. Because it was if you didn't, you would be just, you would lay in bed and be like, oh, I wouldn't get up to what time. I don't care, whatever. Yeah. So I know food. Okay, I got to get up, do breakfast. I got to do cardio first. Hmm. So I get out of bed, you know, look at the time, start running on the spot, do my half an hour to hour cardio in the morning, God. straight up have breakfast, running have on a spot. shower, okay, watch TV for a bit, fall, go back to sleep, yeah. wake up, second meal. Okay, do that. Okay, watch TV for a bit, go back to sleep. So you're almost like, and because the time shift was so different, where in Korea, during when it's daytime, here it was basically coming, to, it was still midnight. You yeah. know, it was still like, so it wasn't like you could talk to people that you know back home and stuff like that. You couldn't talk to them until it got to late afternoon when okay. they were waking up. Yeah. So it was just basically the time schedule was all, and you were basically trying to fill out those spots and just like, you know, keep yourself busy in that sense. Mm. But it was, it was definitely a funny one. It was just, you, you basically become your worst enemy. Your mind becomes something that you need to make sure you keep control of and you have to stay on top of that because of it's not the physique that you have to worry about. It's not that it's literally what your mind starts playing with you and what you do about it. Yeah. That's what becomes your biggest enemy. So it was basically staying on top of those things <laughs> most of all. So I'm just, I'm curious as, as to how they managed to do this kind of, uh, this this whole media blackout, don't tell anyone. Was there any, was there any leaks or was that, how strict were they? Tell us, oh. tell us about the whole, because I mean, I can't imagine trying to keep a show from yeah. like so you weren't even allowed to tell your partner you were competing or yeah yeah because basically what happened right when they announced that the show was going to be cancelled yeah this was after i came out of two weeks quarantine and then another two weeks outside yeah and you were like okay and then basically 
it was I went back to gym for a week, and then at the end of that week, the government tightened restraints again because of coronavirus, and they shut down all the gyms. Okay. So it was like, okay, well, we're back to this again, you know. And then they basically canceled the show. I said, look, officially, the phone is canceled, everything else. But then, right after that, I was already flipping out, thinking, oh, my God, I just wasted <laughs> oh, God. You, know, you can imagine the yeah. conversation. It was just completely like, you know what, this complete water waste of time. So, basically, they said, look, what we're doing is we're going to keep it completely quiet. We're going to have the sh- pro show happen. Yeah. But nothing can leak out. We literally have to keep it completely quiet. At this point, I'm thinking, yeah, they're saying, really? How, how are you going to make this happen? This is, come on, man, really? But they said, look, this is what they're going to do with that. If, if anything leaks out before the show, they're going to have to cancel it. Yeah. So it was all, so, so basically, it was, the responsibility was on every single athlete that, guys, yeah. look, if you let this leak, the show is canceled and you will have no show. Yeah, exactly. So with that perspective, you're thinking, man, hey, I'm, I'm out shut. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't come all this far to kind of let, yeah. just not keep him quiet. So it was like, okay. Easy so basically, see. you tell your family, you tell your people that are close to you, and like, look, this is what's happening and everything yeah. else. But everybody else believed that the show was cancelled. And then you get messages of other people, people feeling, oh, man, this is disappointing. Oh, sorry for this or whatever. And you're seeing that. You're thinking, <sighs> you can't say anything. You can't say otherwise. You can't. You just can't afford to. Yeah. So it's not worth the risk. To keep your, exactly. It's not worth the risk. You have to keep quiet. Mm. So you're kind of going on. And then, believe me, the thing is, the final week, of which was peak before, every single day, you you were gripping your teeth and you were you were basically stressed out because things was changing day by day yeah so quickly that all of a sudden this has been changed now we can't do this anymore we can't do that anymore and you were literally gripping your thing going please don't cancel it please don't cancel it please don't cancel it and every day the stress was like you were on and see you on edge the whole time and you're thinking man you're in peak week and you don't even know if the show is actually going to happen yeah you can so you like you're trying to stay focused and stay okay come on but at the same time you have this utter fear of thinking any minute now, i could get a text saying oh bro we tried but this is it yeah can't do anything it's over so, so so what was that like as a competitor at the venue so i'm taking there was no audience there was no video cameras no. there was what what was it just judges and the competitors on stage or so basically if the the, the promoters had they basically had all the cameras to help yeah they had all the promotion value they had everything set up okay but nobody else because there was no audience there was not there was literally the, pro, the <laughs> guys that were presenting the show and promoting the show yeah the judges and the athletes and that was it okay okay, okay. so athletes weren't allowed to have their phones weren't had to have nobody else with them or anything like that so you literally i remember walking up to the venue and walking to the door and then like getting there and they said okay you know sign this contract saying yeah. you're not allowed to release anything on social media or whatever until we do until okay. we say it's officially okay. okay and i'm like okay you know, come this far all right sign it over and i said oh yeah and you're gonna have to surrender your phone until after the show so i'm like oh, okay give me a minute i just gotta call i gotta call i gotta make a phone call yeah I gotta, yeah I gotta go and tell them look i'm not gonna hear from you now until the show is done i'd be deleting dodgy <laughs> stuff off my phone <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, guys i want to like, check that first uh, you know, so <laughs> You know that, then you hand your phone in, and then you go into the pump-up room, and then you're waiting, and you're getting ready for the whole, you're getting ready to go on stage and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, literally, I mean, they had all the camera crew and everything, video and recording everything. Yeah. You know, you know, everything, interviewing us, recording the whole thing, and everything else like that. So we were like, okay, you know what? When at least when the show is done, you're gonna see everything. Yeah, gonna, yeah. Obviously, gonna, obviously no live streaming, nothing like. So what about things like? tanning and oiling what do you do because i mean if you're by yourself you've got no help you're gonna have to ask other competitors or and this is this is the funny thing because basically i had my tan a uh, day before the show yeah okay so i'm in a hotel room i'm by myself don't know anybody in korea don't have anything to do about it so it's all about improvising again so i go down to the supermarket mm. buy a roller like a painting roller <laughs> yeah <laughs> grab that in, you know, get the total <laughs> product. Start, yeah, and then just start going nuts and roll your back and roll wow. yourself. So, so you can imagine all that, like, where, like, what do you say? Like, you just, it was a, it was a scene. Put it that way. There was tan everywhere, yeah. you know. So you're like, okay, you got to get it done. You, well, what choice you got? So you kind of get down to the show, and they had the guys doing the oiling and. Oh, okay, okay, doing, that's good. Do the last minute spray tan for us and everything else. I was like, okay, yeah. at least if I if I miss the spot, they're gonna catch it. So yeah, like, okay, yeah. That's, so that's all right. 
so for the for the promoters, I mean, now the show, the word obviously must have got out to the government or whether the show happened. Has there been any backlash for them for putting on the event? Have they had any uh, any any, any hassle? Well, because the government knows that the show was happening. Okay. So the government they gave them the guidelines for the show. Oh, so the show, right. Okay. Go. Okay. That's what that's what it I was missing. Like, you know, so it wasn't like it was a hidden secret from them. the government. Basically, gave them guidelines saying, oh, I, right. I mean, I don't understand what it was given, but apparently. You can't, you can't, prom- you can't show the show live. You can't have audience. You can't have this. You can't have yeah. the actors standing. Because they're, tr- they're yeah. trying to prevent gatherings. They're trying to prevent yeah. fans coming and people, you yeah. know, high amounts of people. So they're trying to, right, I see. So that was, that's right. Okay, I've got an idea of how it happened yeah. now. So, so it's kind of like they were basically kind of following the government guidelines to yeah. kind of make the show. Like, this is the guidelines we've been given. So the more they tighten up the strength on them, it was basically they had to comply to it. Yeah. So we finally kind of, okay, that's what for us athletes we're like you know as long as we get a chance to show we have worked this hard we just want to get a chance to stand on stage so mm. you know uh, tell when the rest of it we can also our layer but at least let's get let's get on stage so basically it was just basically that kind of mentality and that's how the whole thing was kind of set up mm. you know so, so well, I mean, yeah so you're back home now you're obviously yeah. you're in a much much better situation now. You know you've got access to your gym, and you you know you, you're in a familiar environment. You've got support. You've got people around you, which was a which must be a luxury considering you spent all that time in a hotel room and you couldn't see a soul. Oh, yeah. So yep. you know, I, I mean, you you do you do in Spain, correct? Alicante in three weeks. Yes, yes, yes. I am. I am in three weeks' time. Yes. Yep. So... You can imagine. You can imagine. You can imagine what that feels like because oh. we came back. Obviously, after being in that situation where you couldn't train properly, you couldn't eat properly, you couldn't diet properly, you couldn't be on your supplements, you couldn't, there's so many things that then you come back and you're thinking, okay, all right, uh, how, it's much, more. how much, how much <laughs> have I been knocked out of the way? How much do I need to catch up? How much do I need to do? So, you know, we came back and we're like, okay, look at your physique and go, you know what? You haven't actually really lost anything. You haven't mm. lost muscle. You're still looking for years. You know, amazing. Whatever, you, actually, you didn't lose anything. So, okay. Let's, you, well, what we said, we noticed what well, you were looking a bit like almost like you ju- you didn't pop the same way. You kind of looked a bit like someone that hasn't trained. That's basically. understandable. Well, yeah. You just, you need to use a couple of weeks, get hitting it hard. And also not having that 24 seven stress and uncertainty because that hanging over you all the time, mate, that's going to, that's going to literally drain your, your body. Massive, massive, massively. So when we finally came in, we had the first week once we came back, we kind of rested up and then ate properly and just kind of trained and just kind of let your body recuperate. And then I, mean, I posted a video last week of what we looked like after we finally had rest and it just looked like everything just woke up again. Ha, ha, and was, I, I, sorry, Sam, sorry to interrupt. Was that the one that I, you posted, you posing and I said, that's the best I've ever seen you. When was that? Yeah, when was Because I, I asked you, I said, when was this video? Because this is the yeah. best I've ever seen you. And he said, no, it was yesterday. Yep, and that wow. was the one. Wow. So we kind of looked at him. We, we stepped back. We were like, oh, you look awesome. Crap. You know, and it, it was basically that. We just had that. We looked at him. Okay. Amazing. And then, okay, but how can we make that better before we get to actually get to Spain? That we have to we still make it better. Yeah. So it was like, okay, God. get your ass back to work. Get back to training. Get back to cardio. Get back to proper dieting now. Get back to actually doing what you were doing before you went out there. So you get your body back to use to that. Mm. And it's just been like, okay, now we're back on it. Everything just feels. I mean, just being in the gym and training your normal gym and lifting the weights that you're supposed to lift and everything else, you can already feel just, you feel great. You feel like, okay, yeah. this this feels more like it. This is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we're so, talking. So it just feels like now you're kind of like coming out. And don't get me wrong. After the career, your confidence, it gets not like, I mean, you just, you play second in the show after doing all that. Your confidence is down. How can it not be? You know, you, regardless, you're feeling like, oh man, I mean, what, and you can't, the thing is you can't even see what you look like so you don't mm. even so what, hang on, hang on. What, what about points how many points did you get from career where does that put you in the standings because i've not checked the recent uh I, I've, I've honestly i haven't even checked either so i have no idea i think you should you should check because i'm th- sure that that second place would have gained you some serious points because i mean surely the goal for you really the, the fact that you're still wanting to compete for this year is the goal to get to the olympia this year of course it is. I mean, that was the whole idea of me like working this out right from the beginning of this year. Because yeah. when we started, it was like, you know what? This year we're making to the Olympia. Do whatever you have to do. Work, do as many shows as you have to. Push as hard as you can. We got to make it to the Olympia. Yeah, that's the goal. So we started this year with that in mind. So when we, we set up the shows, we like, okay, we do South America first. And then we'll do the British. And then we'll do New York Pro. And then, So we were like, look, we're going to hit as many shows. And until we get one, we will keep going. Yeah. You know? 
So our, my mentality was already focused like that. Because even through the off-season training and everything, I was already focused that this is the goal. Yeah. I'm getting it no matter what happens. So when the whole thing happens and everybody's locked down and everything, and it was almost like, man, okay, you just put a big obstacle just put in your way. What do you do now? Do you kind of like, okay, well, that's the year for me then. Well, that's it. Or do you say, you keep pushing? I'm like, look, my drive was too strong. I'm like, nah, man, yeah. I'm going to keep going. If one show pops up anywhere that I can get to, I'm going to be on stage doing it. What? You know? What's your feelings on a lot of the fans, a lot of the fan, the bodybuilding fans have been saying online, on social media, they really would like to see, I know, like is a, they'd like to see you get a special invite for the Olympia, given what you've been through this year. What's your feelings on that, that topic? Honestly, don't get me wrong. If you got it, you, you never say no, you never regret it or anything. But you got to understand my mentality. I'm an athlete. Yeah. My goal is to compete. My goal is to fight and earn my place in. You know, you're not going to moan if you get it. But at the same time, I want to earn it. I want to win it. I want to be able to get it officially. Yeah. You know, not, you know, and not knock on it in any way like that. But you got to understand from an athlete mentality, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of mentality. You know, we, it's like Olympians saying they're working for a gold medal. And then you say, oh, but we're going to give you one. Yeah. Just like that. It that's doesn't... that's not just an athlete's mentality that's a champion's mentality because I'll be honest I'll be straight with you I was yeah. one of this was talked about on the forums and I would think I was the first one to say I don't think he should get a special invite because I don't oh. think he would accept it and this is and this is it and this is it for me oh, I, good your first ever olympia your first ever olympia do you yeah. really want it to be on a special invite and the thing is, it's not even a special invite, it's like a sympathy invite. That's the way I saw it. It's yes. like, oh, he's been through <laughs> hell, he's been stuck in a room, nah, he's had this nah, problem, this nah, show's been cancelled, nah, give him a, nah, give him an invite, you nah, know, nah. it's it's not a, is, it's not a look, charity, I've is it? Never, yeah, exactly, because the thing is with me, you got to understand, I've never used anything that's happened to me in the past as a, you know, as, oh, man, poor me, or look at what's happened to me. No, I really don't care. And look, I've been through hell, but I don't give a damn. I'm like, look, awesome. I'm a warrior, I'm going to keep fighting. I don't care, you know. I don't need, you know, I get it. People say, oh, man, we feel sorry for him. I'm like, but I don't. If we, everything's up, I don't feel sorry. I don't feel, I don't feel bad. I'm like, hey, all he's done is showed me how strong I can be. And I will carry on fighting that way. Yeah. So for you to kind of say, oh, we feel sorry for you. We're going to give you this little, yeah, we have this little token. Yeah, it's nice. And I get the gesture and I get where it's coming from. And I'm grateful for it. But at the same time, I'm an athlete and I know where mm. my mentality is. It's. <sighs> and, and, you know, Samson, on a positive, on another positive what you've been through has gained you more fans than if you'd have won three pro shows this year. That's the bottom line. I mean, that is true. I got it because we were actually, because you know what, when I was going out to Olympia, like Korea, I, my, we were like, okay, we'll keep it quiet. Don't say anything. Yeah. When the show comes, get on stage, do your job, go home. That's it. Don't just keep it, you know, keep it low key and handle it that way. For the first week I was there, no one even knew I was in Korea. Everybody thought I was home. Everybody didn't, they didn't see anything. <laughs> and then what happened was, he, the promoters were trying to promote the show. And they were saying, yeah, Samson's going to be here. Samson's going to compete. Yeah. And people were like, it's like questioning, going, why are you guys, you guys lying? You know that he has coin for 14 days. He's, he's not. And then the promoters basically contacted me and go, Sam, look, we're having this little problem. People don't believe that you're here. Yeah. And it's like, look, your story right now is a very unique one because nobody has ever been through that before. So, it's a shame for you not to bring it out and say something. Mm. So it's like, can you just do a short video of you saying, look, you're in Korea. Yes, you are here and everything else. So basically, we basically, I basically did that. And that's how it leaked out. And then everybody just went nuts. And they were like, whoa, what? Really? What? And I was like, yeah, 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 I'm here. And, everything. and then from that point on, I didn't realize how much of an impact that would have. Because for me, I just thought, oh, okay, go ahead. I just told them, I'm here. cool, there's no problem. Mm. But then... It was like the impact that that came from that. I was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't really think that it was gonna be that big of a deal. But then it just, it just exploded, and I was like, yeah. whoa, okay. Did, it became, re it was really shock for me. Yeah. Did you have any like DMs from sort of like uh, to pros reaching out to you saying, you oh, know, giving you some words of encouragement? Tell us a few. Oh man, from, I mean, from Brandon to Sean Roden nice. to Justin Awe to. To literally uh, all of them, uh, do you know what? Man? And also, yeah. these are all people that have been through their own ordeals and their own kind of tribulations exactly. and challenges, exactly. and they've come through it and they've risen to the top. You know, exactly. So imagine your situation where you've like, look, I'm under, I'm just a new bodybuilder on the scene, man. I'm not really, I haven't got to that level yet. I haven't won a pro show. I haven't been to that Olympia. I haven't quite hit that point yet. Yeah. So for them to take notice and write a message out to you and say, look, we see you were doing, man. Hmm. Well, keep going. 
man, what does that do? What do you think that does to someone's mentality? At that point, you're saying you're going, hell, I'm going to train as hard as I can. What yeah, this that will get you through that bad day. That'll, take you that, that'll get through that day and give you that bit of impetus and encouragement to think, you know what? Brandon Curry and Sean Rowan just messaged me today and give me that little, that little push, that little <laughs> lift I needed while I'm feeling shit in my room. <laughs> exactly. Massively. So when this whole good. thing, and that's why I said, like, whenever this whole thing started, like, you get more and more bad news and everything else, people were like, oh, man, we would feel sorry for I'm like, but I see the positive. I see the things that if I had never come here and did this, I, I this wouldn't have never happened. You know, mm. you would have been like, we have to do another bad year. But I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, well, I see a lot of positives from coming from it. And I'm like, well, I'm grateful. Mm. You know, I only set out to... Do like do whatever I can to get on stage to do a pro show this year. That's what I set out to do. Okay, I got to do as many shows to qualify for Olympia. But now it's like you're getting so many people actually taking notes and saying, "Man, we see what you're trying to do." And you're thinking, "Wow, I didn't, I didn't even see that before." All I was thinking was one track minded of my end goal, my end goal, my end goal. Yeah. But now I actually had to stop and start looking at the journey and saying, "Okay, because I did this, this has happened. And because of these negative things that's happened here, these positives come from it." Yeah. And then you start thinking, "Okay, you know, maybe it's time for you to." Stop completely focusing on the end goal and start taking note and enjoy the journey. Another thing I'd like to know is the only remaining qualifiers, chances for you to qualify for the 2020 Olympia are Spain and Chicago. Now, there's other shows like the British Grand Prix. There's shows like Romania. that are still this year that will qualify you for the next year's Olympia. Have you thought yeah. beyond competing in the Spain show to purely qualify for this Olympia? Well, of course I have. I mean, uh, <laughs> you keep going, that. this guy. <laughs> Nothing you got, stopping you got a him. show happening in the UK, and you think I'm going to sit there and go, well, oh, well, five weeks from now, five weeks after Spain, well, I just want to be off my diet. I just want to relax. Come on. I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm already, I'll put my name <laughs> on my list already. I'm like, yo, let's go. Let's go. You'll be there in the morning on stage before they even set the lights up. <laughs> exactly, man. Like, oh, man. If means, especially if it means he qualifies you for next year's Olympia. I'm like, hell. Yeah. Shit. So, Come on, let's go. so what's the best case scenario? You get enough points or you qualify for the Olympia. You do the Olympia this year. You do another show. You win the British Grand Prix. You qualify for next year's Olympia. And so you've got it in the bag ready. You know, I mean, that really would be... A, that, that, would that be the turnaround for you? That would be the greatest turnaround because then I can yeah. finally come up and say, oh, I can have a break. <laughs> yeah. And relax. I feel like, oh my God, this was a crazy year. But look, next year I don't have to struggle so much. Yeah. Next year I have to on the Olympia. Or anything. So I'm like, look, I see the upside and I see what can happen, you know, if things go well. Mm. So I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to carry on working. If you have to work, <laughs> grind your ass off this year to have a better year next year, would you not do it? Come on, you already started it. Yeah. So, of course, I've seen them shows. I'm like, yep, I'm going to do the British, of course. I think, I think we need to change your name from the Nigerian lion to the Energizer bunny. Because, <laughs> mate, you're just all oh, the Terminator. No, Terminator, that's a bit less soft, isn't it? <laughs> Terminator. T Samson the Terminator Dowdery just keeps going, doesn't stop. Like, no matter what, how many times you try and kill him, he keeps going. <laughs> Regenerates. I mean, he really has felt like that this year wow. because it's most like, and especially being on a diet for that long, you know, you're thinking, because I'm actually shocked about how I was able to do it because I didn't. I mean, I wouldn't Look have never thought before in the past I would have been able to stay on diet for this long, you know. Mm. And I'm thinking, like, and it's gone to the point where you've. Almost, you've gotten used to it. I mean, the cardio every morning, all that, the dieting, everything else, it almost feels like mentally you kind of just surrender to it. Now you're used to the idea of it and how you feel every yeah. every day, the tiredness and you found a way to kind of just survive and live with it. And now you're almost to the point where you're even enjoying it. Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a crazy one. But I was like, wow. Have you all, I mean, surely, because I saw you got some really good quality, high quality footage. Are you, are you going to put this together? I think you should maybe fix, get, hook up with your sponsors and try and get like it put into some sort of like film. Because this is a real, this is like a real, like when you were talking before, I could hear Rocky music in my head. Like literally, I was thinking like, this is really inspiring stuff. This is stuff that really, it's a thing is, mate, it's a, it's been awful for you in so many ways, but it's been so, I won't use the word entertaining, but it's been uplifting and really motivating for us. It's given us something to focus on when it's been a real terrible shit year for so many people. This has been a real story of triumph and, and determination. So I think you should really look into that, mate. I mean, maybe you already have. Yeah, because we obviously, I'm obviously recording everything and documenting everything as we yeah, go. Yeah, good. And my feeling is, my feeling is like, man, come on, man. I just need a happy ending. To yeah, fight. yeah, yeah. We need a positive ending. Come on, man. Just, you know, to make this whole thing a real glamorous moment and stuff like that. So it's almost like you see everything happen. You think, okay, no matter what you've been through this year, because I've got so many positive messages from people saying, man, bro, you really inspire me right yeah. now. You know, you see, you see what you're going through. And I thought I was having a bad year, but seeing what you're going to make me feel like, 
this ain't nothing. I can go through anything. And you kind of seem to get that from so many people. And you're thinking, I didn't know even, I wasn't even, I didn't set out with that in mind, thinking I was going to inspire other people. But that's that. why, so, that's why they're so inspired because you didn't plan all this. You've just, you've just took the knocks as they've come. It's knocked you down and you just got back up and you've kept going, you've kept going, you've kept going, mate. And that, to be honest, like I said, seriously, for you, for your, for your name, your brand, your long-term career, what's happened to you this year is going to be more beneficial than if you'd have won every pro show this year. That's the bottom line. And this is, and that's the crazy thing about yeah, it. Yeah, that's the way it works. Because, you know, like, as a pro body, you always think, okay, my first pro win, my first pro show, my first, and you're always thinking about that in terms of that contest, text, and stuff like that. <laughs> secondary, you, secondary. You know what I mean? And then it you is, really forget, yeah. mm. you really do forget, like, how much, you know, what you do along the way, and, you you know, and when you stop and you sort of look around and you see that, you actually think, wow, okay, you know what? Two years from now, I'm going to look back in 2020 and think, I'm not going to look back in 2020 and go, oh, man, it was a year where everything went to tits up and all the freaking crazy. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to look at it and say, man, look what I overcome in that year. You know, seriously, how can I how can I ever complain again? You look- rose to the challenge time and time and time again. And the way you've handled and the way your your attitude is... Because I was thinking, I was thinking. I actually wrote on the forum today. I said, I hope he's in a very positive frame of mind because I don't want him to say something emotionally that might reflect badly. And you haven't said a single thing to, in your in your you know in your favor. It's like I'm really I'm really pleased that you've cu- you've got this, and it feels genuine. It's not like you've just been oh, like say course. this, say this. It's not been scripted, you know. No, because this is, this is it. But like, I mean, maybe probably a few months ago, I would have been different. But I would have been. But what this whole thing has made me, <laughs> made me grow. It really has made me grow as a person. And, yeah. You know, first point where you've had so many knocks, and the first time you get a few knocks, and you're kind of cursing and you're thinking about, oh, how crap it is, how you know, how rubbish and everything. And everything. But then when you keep getting hit, 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 and you keep getting up, yeah. You start thinking, actually, you know what, man, this is I'm making this is alone is making making more of a story for me. It is. So it what is. I can do. I'm like, okay, you know what? Yeah, let's keep going. Just keep going. Don't don't stop. Just keep People going. are invested in your story, mate. People are interested in your story. People are really like rooting for you now. I mean, there's no way that anyone could be rooting against you now with what you've been through, what you've achieved, and you know, because what you've done this year, it is an achievement. You didn't throw in the towel. You didn't quit. You just kept going, mate. And I just think, I just think that's something that inspires everyone. And I, you know, and that's kind of where I kind of see it. And I'm just thinking, okay, you know what, man. I just want to be able to step in the next stage and if it's be Spain and everything yeah. and actually say, look, all this, it wasn't for nothing. You know, we, we did it. Look, we're here. Mm. We're standing on stage. I mean, if we're able to qualify for Olympia, I mean, hell, this is almost a message going, look, there's mm. a good reason why you carry on walking you carry on going even though you get knocked over and over again. Things do work out in the end if you keep going, you know. So for me, even for me, that would be a message for myself to think, wow, you know what? How have I managed to do this? But seriously, I can't. I can't even fault that seriously at all. Yeah. Samson, I I literally have no more questions, mate. That is literally that you've just given me everything I wanted there, because I wanted the full story, the full lowdown. I wanted to know exactly how this had all happened, and you've and you've 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 put it put it across beautifully, mate. And uh, thank you for kind of sticking with it, mate, and kind of you know and and giving us all something to really follow and be inspired by. During a very turbulent, difficult, challenging year, you know, it's been it's been worse for some than others, and but it's been pretty, yeah. you know, it's been, like I said, but it's there's a message there, there's a message there that we can all, oh, oh I'm getting oh. emotional. <laughs> it's right out, of it. yeah, oh. yes. Oh, I'm getting shivers, mate. Seriously, it really is. Uh, it's been, and I, I, like I said, the year ain't over yet. You're still, you're just getting going, really. Yeah, the year it's not over yet. We still got rounds and months left to go. So yeah. hell, round after round, we might get hit each round, but we're gonna keep coming back. Hell, why not? Keep yeah, going, mate. So, keep well, going. Keep going. Keep doing what you do, mate, and uh, keep getting more resilient and stronger. And uh, and um, and that's it, really. That's all I can say. So. Uh, Samson Dowdy, yeah, we'll be in Alicante, mate. So we'll be we'll be screaming for you. I think you're gonna be like. Uh, you can have. Quite, I think you're gonna have fans you've never ever met when you go to your next shows now. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Really. Something. All right, then, mate. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said, we'll see you in Alicante in a few weeks. And uh, thank you, yeah. bro. Keep pushing, mate. Keep working hard. Nice one, man. See you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samson. Bye bye. Okay, guys, we're going to go to a Cali Pro review. I know it's a, a little week late, but um, the episode, last episode, episode eight, went on a bit too long so um we just managed to decided to carry it over to this week so we're going to go to the confirmation round and awards footage could 
just turn it down a bit, please, Colin. Thank you. Get rid of that music. He'll get a copyright strike. <laughs> right, okay. So here is the Cali Pro. California State. It was held in Las Vegas. Now here we have, we've got Dorian Hayward on the left. I think he was, what was he, eighth place, I think. Uh, Anne Nguyen, uh, second in here. He got third place. This was a real progression for Anne Nguyen. Um, he's one that really uh, got it all physique-wise. But um, I felt like from last year, he's really started to put it together condition-wise now. So third place here was a really, really good placing for him. Uh, the middle, oh, very disappointed. I'm, I'm not disappointed. Um, it was Hassan Mustafa. He was fourth place at the New York Pro the week before. But um, he, um, he was in hospital after this, hospitalized. He had uh, hemorrhoids and then he had a, uh, was it an abscess or infection or something? So he was on antibiotics on a drip. Um, so he was in hospital. So he was allowed out to compete. Um, he's not actually even able to train now because I, I know he, he said to me yesterday he's hoping to do the Chicago Pro. Um, so hang on, we go full screen. Full screen, here we are. Is that full screen? Here we go. Right. Okay, there we go. That's better. Right, okay. Um, oh, it's a different lineup now. We've got uh, Antoine Vallant there on the, the far left. Antoine was seventh place the week before at the New York Pro. Um, a little bit flat. Oh, flat there through the chest and back. Uh, had a thousand gram of carbs from the Thursday. He says on the last episode of Globe Muscle, he had, I think he had 10,000 grams of carbs. So 10 kilos of carbs went into that body to fill him out for the Cali, Cali Pro, which he won here. So yeah, and he asked me in the interview, uh, have you ever seen anyone that's gone seventh to first in a week? Um, I'm sure I'll have to brush up on that one, but I'm sure that's never happened. So I've seen bodybuilders go from first to seventh in a week, but never seventh to first. So second one in, who's that there now? Is that Anne Nguyen? Yes, that's Anne Nguyen, second. Here we are, look at the cursor up. There we go. That's Anne Nguyen there. Oh, he's got this stomach bloke there. Fantastic, fantastic legs, fantastic shape. I really rate this guy. Um, in the middle, got Patrick Moore, 10th place at the Olympia last year. Uh, he was 10th place at the Arnold Classic. I think um, people were a bit disappointed with that because he really was one of the sensations of the Olympia last year. Um, Patrick took fourth place here and uh, he was up from sixth New York Pro. It was not not too bad, maybe, uh, but he's a, he's a work in progress. Oh, they're all going. There's Max Charles and Eddie Bracamonte. Who have we got now? Okay, this is Eddie Bracamonte. He took fifth place here. This is a big guy. He's over six foot tall. Um, oh, sorry, this is the actual placing announcements now. Yeah, Eddie Bracamonte, fifth place there. 270 pounds, I think. He, I believe he was up about 12 pounds. I think I'm sure it was about 12 pounds up on the previous year. Trains with Sergio Oliva Jr. in San Diego. Really nice guy, personal trainer. Very, very well respected. Um, very strong guy in the gym. So, okay, we've got fourth place now. We've got Patrick Moore. Uh, Colin, can we get a little bit of volume, please? Tiny bit of volume so you can hear the placings. Thank you. There you are, a little bit. That's it, I'll do. Yep. Fourth place, Patrick Moore. I think he's going to be disappointed with that. But um, I haven't spoke to Patrick. I don't know whether he's doing any more pro shows for this year. Um, I just, I'd love to see him at the Olympia this year. So, okay, third place. Third place. Look at that guy's trousers. Oof, look at those tartan trousers. I'm sure there should be a law against them in the UK. Maybe not in Scotland. <laughs> Third place, Andy Gullion. Yeah, absolutely fantastic result there. Uh, I think so anyway. I think he is. But here's a guy that really has potential to win, win pro shows, really. I mean, he's really, really good. Look at that shape. Look at the structure. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, really. Shoulder waist to ratio, huge quads small joints and he's finally nailing that condition so that's that's really really good to see he's like a kind of guy, guy like akin williams i think we'd almost forgiven up on him being able to get decent condition but he's now getting it so well, second place max charles fifth place at the new york pro the week before he was eighth place at the Arnold classic earlier in the year many were very felt he was badly robbed there um, he's really, uh, like I said on one of the other episodes of Globe Muscle, I said he was, uh, we thought he was on the slide at the end of last year, but he's really managed to claw it back this year. He's managed to work with Milos Sarge, really nail his condition. Um, he looks very disappointed there. Oh, God. Yeah, he's worked really hard. For that. They've all worked hard. And the winner of the Muscle Contest International... 
California State Championships in Las Vegas. Antoine Vallant. I mean, how could he not be happy for Antoine? Here's a story of uh, determination there. Seventh place the week before. And here he is. <clears throat> Pardon me. Seventh place going to first. Leapfrogging over Max Charles, who took fifth place the week before. So Max Choice, he's flipped with uh, Max there. And uh, also beat Patrick, because Patrick beat it. Patrick Moore, fourth place there. He beat him. Uh, Patrick was sixth the week before. Antoine was seventh. So Antoine's managed to jump over Max Charles and Patrick Moore there. So, yeah, that's a fantastic result. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, there's Jim Manny there with his, his blue shirt with a mask. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, go on, Antoine. Oh, is he doing a weird... Oh, he's doing the metal thing. What is that called? Metal fingers. The what? The horns. Oh, it's horns. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I should know. I'm a heavy metal fan. Right, okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Let's go to... Let's quickly go to <clears throat> Antoine Valant's posing routine. Antoine, very, very flamboyant poser. Amazing poser, actually. Said he did some posing practice with Flex Wheeler. I think it was a few days before this. He said he had two and a half hours. He said Flex Wheeler really schooled him. Because Flex Wheeler, obviously, one of the uh, the greatest poser in bodybuilding. So, here we go. Oh, with a quad chick. Look at his legs. I think, honestly, I think Antoine Vallant has one of the best lower bodies in the industry. I mean, right now, his, 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 his calves are huge. He's got very, very full detail quads, very well balanced. I think once he gets his upper body really perfectly matched with his upper body, sorry, with his lower body, I think he's, uh, yeah, the lighting's so bad, it's hard to tell. Because I saw some pictures of him in his hotel room and he just looked, uh, he looked absolutely sensational. He can't really see it that much here. But you can see that he won. So that's all that matters, really. He was the best there that day. Wow, I can't pose him. This is what I like to see. Proper posing. Proper posing. Nice one, Antoine. Respect. He is um, real classic kind of... It's not expressive, I suppose. It's creative posing. Giving something a little bit different there. So... Yeah, Antoine is going to the 2020 Mr. Olympia. He's absolutely thrilled, him and his coach, Dorian Hamilton. And I'm really, really happy for him. Yeah, Antoine, I think he's one of my all-time favorite people to interview as well. I've interviewed him three times for Global Muscle. He was on last episode, episode eight of Global Muscle. Go check it out. Um, and, the, and the response from the viewers, they love Antoine Vallant. They just love him. Great personality, very, uh, very funny guy. Go check out some of his podcasts as well. He does with... Um, HD Muscle is sponsor. Uh, look at that structure. Great structure. It's just a shame you can't really see the detail. Uh, but like Antoine said, this was a venue that wasn't... Um, it was either this, that kind of nothing, because it wasn't a venue that was really, you know, really ideally suited for bodybuilding shows. But, um, you know, no audience was there, so they had to... It was either this or no show. So a really big congratulations there to... John Lindsay and um, I think it was Tay McGuindy or Terry Gwindy, one of the brothers. So yeah, that's it, guys. Okay, so that is our review for the 2020 Cali Pro. So I think the next show on the calendar will be the Alicante European Pro Show run by Emilio Martinez. So we'll be doing a full review of that. We will be there in attendance. So check that out on the next episode of Global Muscle. And we are out. Okay, guys, it's shout-out time. So we've got three shout-outs this week, as per usual. So let's go to our first one. This is Carbon Culture USA. This is a new gym franchise. Uh, started, um, one of the partners is Brandon Curry. Brandon and Brandy Curry, um, his wife. This is, they, they, they launched their first one. I can't remember what it was now, actually. I think, they're, I think this is the, the third one now that's opened. This is the grand opening here. Let's check that out. Okay, that was on the, f the last weekend. They had, I mean, there was, everyone was there. Let me get a picture up. Where's the picture? Oh, there we are, this one. Right, this is who there was. Uh, obviously, Brandon there, he's at his own gym. <laughs> Antoine Vallant was there, fresh off his Cali Pro win. Yeah, John De La Rosa, Chris Gethin, Brion Ainsley, two-time uh, Olympia Classic champion. Jeremy Potvin, the um, men, men's physique. I believe he's making a comeback this year. John Meadows, uh, one of the guests on Globe... I forgot the name of the show, then Globe Muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Bo Lewis, who won the New York Pro uh, 212. I don't know this Quincy Washington. He's a big dude. 
um, Matt Cooper, Jose Raymond was there, Keon Pearson, who we're very much looking forward to seeing up against Jason Lowe at the Chicago Pro in the 212. Uh, Derek Lunsford as well. Uh, she gets, let me get some sneaky video if they've got any of... No, they haven't got any. Not yet. It's not up yet. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is, I believe, Steve Kuklo's opening one in Texas as well. This is a new gym franchise, and I think I think, I think, think Brandon and Brandy have gone to, onto something here. I think it's a really, really... There's a real kind of strong, strong brand here. Strong, so very strong branding, sorry. So, let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's mostly openings. Yeah, so... Obviously, they had a bit of a sh uh, shutdown with the the COVID situation, but they're all systems go now. So yeah, just really excited for the guys now. Um, maybe we'll maybe see some over in the U Europe or UK. Some of these carbon cultures. Maybe it could be the new world gym. New. Uh, so what else have we got here? Okay, it's mostly just should have really gone to Brandon's. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's um. Yep, so give these guys a follow. Carbon Culture USA. I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of this uh, this new gym franchise throughout the USA. Uh, I believe they've got three or four locations, several more planned, Brandy was telling me recently. So this is, I mean, this only really started in the last year, so they've really hit the ground running. Okay, Carleen, let's go to your shout out, mate. Mm -hmm. Woohoo. <laughs> this is Olivia Bian. This was, oh, this was the lady that was stuck in... America, <laughs> poor woman. Oh, bless her. She, I've heard she's very funny. Yeah. Which which one should I click, click on then? Come on then, pick one. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to override you. I'm going to click on this one because it's a physique shot and she looks absolutely incredible here. Oh no, it's <laughs> Juliana. That's <laughs> not even her. Sorry, I'm a bit of a Juliana fanboy. Sorry. She's obviously a Juliana fanboy, fan lady as well. So, God, look at that diet face there. That's cool. So let's play this one. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> she looks she, diet face looks good on her. Looks cool. She's got that kind of shaped face. It suits, I think. America is a really great country, but I really miss China. My parents and brother and sister and real Chinese food and my small apartment, my cute car. Maybe I don't eat. Look at the glutes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we can say that in bodybuilding. Look at that person's glutes, and it's not weird. Fantastic physique. Okay, let's show. Anything you want to click on, Colleen? Training, posing. Uh, God, look at the legs there. Um, yeah. Whoa! Hang on, bring that up full screen. <laughs> wow, she's got some quads on her. I believe she goes. I love your smile. You're affecting and amazing. No, it's not me. Uh, <laughs> female bodybuilding fans, eh? <laughs> Gotta love them. Okay, so. Oh, here she is next to. That's Hella Trevino, isn't it? With a mask on. Yeah, look at her quads. Have you noticed um, Asian, like Korean bodybuilders, the male bodybuilders, the female bodybuilders, they always have absolutely outstanding. They're usually quite short, but they've always got outstanding legs and calves. It's just something I've noticed, especially the... Um, oh, what am I doing? Oh, okay. I don't want to see some broccoli. <laughs> there she is at the New York Pro. I don't think she did great at the New York Pro, did she? What did she place? So I think she she diets very fast, apparently. That's what I was told. Um, but I've heard she's extremely funny in interviews, so maybe we'll have to get her on Global for a future episode. She likes Metallica. She likes Metallica. Oh, look. Okay, you've got a new fan, Olivia. Okay. If she likes Five Finger Death Punch, she's the coolest lady I've ever known. She likes to put music on them, doesn't she? <laughs> Mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, hello there, thicky lady. That's a woman who said that. Yeah, she's good. I just can't. I can't stop looking at her legs. She's got incredible quads. I think she needs a bit more condition, doesn't she? When, uh, let's have a look at this shot as well. Okay, one more. Okay, she's awesome. Olivia. Listen to the what BGM. You? Are you too tired? Okay. Didn't get enough sleep? Don't have enough energy? Don't have enough time? Is that what's stopping you right now? Is that the thing? But the truth is, you have time. You do have time. You have the skill. You have the knowledge. Nice and bit of motivational stuff there. Okay, do you want can we see look at one more? Uh, that one. Which one? The middle one. Middle one? Yeah. Why? <laughs> look at the bunches, they're cute. Chinese muscles doll. 
Well, the doll need makeup. The raps. Okay. Nice Chinese music there, I think. Yeah, that was great. Oh, okay, shoulders there. Wow. Okay, I think we spent wow. giving far too much time. <laughs> Carly. Okay, we're going to go on to our final shout out for episode nine of MD Glove Muscle. This is Alex Aldenti. Now, if you don't know who Alex Aldenti is, uh, you obviously haven't been a fan of bodybuilding for very long because Alex, um, oh, I'll tell you some interesting facts about Alex. Italian photographer uh, moved to America many, many years ago. He, uh, he was, if you look at all the old... Uh, like the 90s, all the magazine, Muscle Mag, and all those uh, front covers, a lot of those, especially the beach photo shoots, a lot of these were done by Alex. Um, he's, I think he's gone more into videography now. So you see he's doing, a, um, he's doing a, uh, a documentary, I believe, with Frank Zane. Filming continues on the real Frank Zane feature documentary titled Frank Zane Defined. We've got to get Frank Zane on the show. Wink. Uh, Columbo, <laughs> Wink. You know, yeah, Frank Zane, Mr. Olympia, 77 to 79. Do you want to know a bit of fact about Frank Zane? He was the first Mr. Olympia to receive a Sandow. Before that, they used to get a trophy that wasn't a Sandow. So, yeah, so this is the documentary that Alex Ardenti is now working on. So, oh, wow, that looks great. Doesn't that look great? Also, he um, Alex did the uh, the Sups documentary. Have you seen that on Netflix? Yeah, it's about just take the history of. Oh, I pressed the wrong Very sensitive mouse pad. It's um, there is a Frank Zane. This is a recent shot. This one. Yeah, there you go. And also, um, I've got something in common with Alex Adanti. There's, he's a bodybuilding photographer that has shot a front cover and has been on a front cover. And that's, that's something I can lay claim to as well. Because, uh, anyway, but it's not about me. It's about Frank Zane. No, it's not about Frank Zane. It's about Alex Identi. So, Alex Identi, yeah, he was a fantastic bodybuilder. That was, that's, that was my point. Um, uh, still in great shape, as you can see. Still looks great. Um, he's over 35. But um, yeah, fantastic photographer. He's one, actually, what he was, I, I went up to him at the Olympia. I was running past. I think I was drunk at the bar a few years ago. Um, <laughs> and I went and tapped him and I said, uh, Alex, he was just sat at the bar with some friends or whatever after on the Saturday night at the Olympia. And look, his arms are still looking beefy. And I said to him, uh, you're one of my favorite photographers, Alex. Because he was. He was um, Kevin Horton, Per Bernal, Alex Ardenti, uh, Chris Bailey, the British photographer. These are some of the, uh, the most iconic uh, bodybuilding photographers ever. And it's good to see that he's gone into other things and he's still very, very visible and working hard in the industry. There we are, that's it, Prime Video on Amazon Prime, sorry, not Netflix, the competitor. So yeah, so check it out. Sups, the movie. Um, clues in the name. <laughs> movie about supplements. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's this? Okay, let's play this. Okay. Am I allowed to show this? Joe Weider was 100% tuned into the pop culture. See, of there you go. This is the, he rise to the, the document. Sorry, the film, well, the documentary on Amazon Prime about the history of sports Joe supplements Weider right back in the 60s and 70s when uh, Joe Weider was... was everything was fun. Hey, look. Everything had sex appeal from the editorials... Sex appeal, yeah. That's ladies. what we keep going. At the time, Joe was With using Global Muscle. champions like Larry Scott, Dave Draper, and Frank Zane. To Dave Draper, stuff. Frank Zane, yeah. Well, Blom Bomber. Frank Zane, there's Joe Weider there. Ambassador to the movement. See, there's, that was in the early 70s. That's before the Sandow. So, actually, Arnold only got one Sandow then. No, because Arnold won the Olympia seven times. He won the Olympia 70 75. If the first Sandow ever given was in 1977, that means when F Arnold Schwarzenegger made his comeback in 1980, there was only he's only got one Sandow, but seven Olympias. So Phil Heath has got more Sandows than Arnold Schwarzenegger. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a hidden fact there uh, that uh, I didn't know about before. That I just realised. Right. Okay. Yes, that's our shout outs for for episode nine of md globe muscle i hope you've enjoyed this episode and uh we're gonna look at doing some more maybe some more training footage because that was very popular the nathan diasha segment we had a few weeks ago well two episodes ago so i uh, hope you've enjoyed this latest episode and uh i appreciate all the views and all the shares and all the likes and everything else so yep uh 
I will see you next week for MD Global Muscle. I am Giles Thomas, your host, and we are out.